Hey guys, welcome back. This is Matt Shat, episode 483, featuring a look at the game Knights of the Chalice 2. Now this game just came out uh, back in March, back on March 25th of this year. It's uh, $44.99 on Steam and GOG, and I think it's about that same price on the developer's website. Uh, but even though this is a new game, uh, to me it fits uh, sort of a mold, it kind of strikes a chord, <laughs> it fits a vibe uh, of games from the uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, uh, games like uh, Pool of Radiance, uh, uh, maybe Icewind Dale. Uh, you know, it's very challenging, it's very tough, <laughs> very harsh. <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, very, very fun, and you can really get yourself so engrossed in the mechanics of this thing, the... Uh, the, the, the combat mechanics, the leveling system, the feeds, I mean, you can really uh, spend a lot of time with this. And I think it's time well rewarded. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I managed to beat this game and I really uh, enjoyed it, but man, did I ever yell at this thing? You know, you could probably ask my neighbors from the, a block over. <laughs> you know, this thing can be frustrating, but on the other hand, you know, it's, it's a good sign, right, when a game can get its uh, hooks into you the, to the point where you're that emotionally invested in, in the outcome of this thing. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, in this video we'll go over uh, mostly the opening uh, hour or two. I'll set up a party, discuss some of the uh, ways you might think about building a party. Uh, and then I'll give you some thoughts on the later game and just thoughts on the game overall. Now uh, hopefully by the end of this week, uh, maybe uh, next week we'll see, I'm going to be interviewing the developer of this game, HeroicFantasyGames.com, uh, uh, Pierre. Uh, so if you have questions you want me to pass along to him, go ahead and comment on the video. You know, I'll be happy to uh, ask Pierre whatever those things are. Uh, but anyway, that's the next episode. Uh, so for this episode, we'll be playing Knights of the Chalice 2. So, got a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is Knights of the Chalice 2. Well, folks, so today we'll be looking at Knights of the Chalice 2. Now, you might recall I looked at uh, the first of these games. Let's see when that was. Well, it feels like uh, not too long ago. Yeah, Janu or June uh, uh, 2019 So when I looked at the first one, episode 422, uh, if you want to go back to that. But he's come out, uh, Pierre has come out with this new one uh, in March 25th, 2022. At least that's when it was released here on Steam. Uh, I played through this, uh, completed it. It's, uh, you know, i got some thoughts on it. I'll share with you as we, as we go along here. It's, it's very old school it's difficult, it's frustrating, uh, at least uh, when I played it there were lots and lots of uh, bugs and it would crash you to the desktop quite often, uh, especially when you got into some of those bigger battles. So there's definitely some negatives with this, I know he's uh, <clears throat> working on those, it might already be fixed for all I know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that aside, I just uh, really wanted to cover this game because it was, it really kind of scratched that itch uh, I had for something uh, Kind of old-fashioned, good old-fashioned, dungeon-crawling, uh, turn-based, tactical combat. A lot of focus here on the mechanics of battles and leveling and feats and <laughs> just a whole lot to this. It's amazing to think that basically one person, and a little bit of help, you know, created all of this stuff. And now if you want to pick it up, you can get it here on, I'm on Steam here, it's $45, basically $44.99. Looks like he's got an Arc Mage Edition. Not sure what else that includes. I guess we could find out. Let's see. <laughs> what do you get for being an Arc Mage? Where do you say Arch Mage? Uh, let's see. You get a guidebook. 410 page guidebook. <laughs> that that might have been useful. <laughs> might be worth it just for that. Uh, module editor guidebook. Okay. Soundtracks. Extra artwork and the promise of additional content. So you might want to throw in for that. I think having a guidebook would be helpful. Uh, you might kind of balk at the price, fifty nine eighty three, and a lot of people are like, "Well, you know, you'd pay that for the new Dragon Age or something." You know, who's who's this guy to be charging these prices? But you know, if you, uh, I think uh, once you play this, you'll see and start thinking about the amount of work this guy put into this game. Uh, this is a. I think you would be happy to pay that. <laughs> uh, let's see what it is on GOG. Forty-four ninety-nine on GOG, same deal. Is that a little bit cheaper, maybe? 
Now, pretty much the exact same price on GOG. Or you can buy it directly off the website here. This is HeroicFantasyGames.com. And let's see how much it costs here. 33 GPB. What is that? <laughs> $44. So it's, you're going to spend about 44 bucks, however you slice it. Uh, usually what I like to, to say is, you know, unless there's some special reason you want to play it on Steam, maybe you like the convenience of that or God. Now, I'm sure you, Pierre gets more of the money if you just buy it directly off his uh, website. You know, at the very least, if you want to buy the game from those other, you know, GOGs or Steams or whatever, maybe do that, but then come back here to buy the uh, that guidebook. So at least he would get the full uh, 13.99 GBP instead of a you know a big slice of that. I bet you Steam probably takes 10, 20 percent. Uh, you know I don't know for sure, but I'm sure they get a cut. Uh, I don't know about Gog. <laughs> so if you have no preference, buy it from uh, his website. Otherwise, uh, at least look at consider buying that guidebook. Uh, anyway, enough of that. Uh, there's a lot to this game, so let's uh, boot it up, create a party, and see what it's all about. All right, folks, and here we go. Night of the Chalice 2. Lovely opening graphic there. You know, one thing I like about these uh, kind of old-school retro vibe of this is everything is quick. There's no... You know, every time you play a modern game, it feels like you spend most of your time looking at loading screens. <laughs> you know, that won't be the case here. Everything will be quick, snappy, uh, just the way you like it. Okay, I'm going to... Before we get started here, I think I should probably uh, saved game selected. Make sure I got my latest quick save saved. <laughs> Remember a certain recent fiasco where I managed to lose a quick save and had to start a game over. So I'll go ahead and do that before we get started. I think I'll even show you that process just in case. <laughs> Okay, but what I really want to do is start a new party. Now this game, let's see, where is new party? Launch module maybe? Uh, the tutorial, by the way, is really essential. It's It'll kick your butt too. <laughs> you know, instead of tutorial, it probably should be something like uh, uh, introductory module or starter module, something like that. You know, it gives you a good, uh, good hint of what's to come. And it's not easy. It's not like just some walkthrough thing. It's actually quite challenging, and there's a little story behind it. It's, uh, you know, it's almost like a little starter dungeon in, in and of itself. So I'd recommend that, even if you, oh, I know how to play, <laughs> uh, fine. But you might still want to play the tutorial just because there is some, some fun content there. Uh, but I'm gonna go into the augury uh, of chaos, select. and we'll get our party created. Yeah, okay. So we could go with these uh, pre-made characters, which might not be a bad idea. Uh, I'll just say here, starting off, you know, uh, unless you play on easy mode, which I, I never recommend that, you know, try to rise to the challenge of challenge mode, but man, it is, a, this is not a game that you can afford to be cute with. You know, a lot of times when I create parties, I like to you know, play against type sometimes, have like a half-orc mage or something. <laughs> you know, an elf barbarian's kind of fun. You know, just, just do fun stuff, experiment. You can't do that with this game. Uh, you, you really just have to think about what race and class combo, uh, what stats you need, because otherwise you they'll just be dying every, every battle, even the trash in this game. <laughs> I can't emphasize just how brutal and unforgiving uh, this game can be. So any... You know, you talk about min-maxing, any little perk you can get, you want to leverage that to the full extent you can. <laughs> and you definitely can't afford to be taking on characters that are anything but, you know, pretty near perfect. So with that in mind, let's uh, start looking at some of the options here. And we get six, which is a nice number, and you're going to need all of them. And you can uh, recruit some NPCs a little bit later, too. You get another two NPCs. And I meant to look this up before we started here, and I neglected to. <laughs> I'm not sure if those, uh, if this is one of those games where your XP is divided, you know, divvied up amongst all the parties. So maybe if you have a big party, 
you get less XP per battle. You know, I can't confirm confirm or deny that right now. Uh, but something you might want to uh, look up on your own. Okay, let's see. Let's look at the help first of all. This will be <laughs> always at the forefront of your thoughts. You'll be referring to these pages quite often. And, and uh, the developer Pierre, Heroic Fantasy, uh, they do a great job here. Just about everything is laid out on these pages. So you don't have to have uh, other windows open uh, or be consulting walkthroughs or tables. You might want to look at that PDF he supplies in the uh, Archimage edition. But already, you know, this choice between male and female, you might think, well, you know, what difference does that make? I'll make a female character. But if you look here, you know, there's some, uh, I guess there's no max penalty, but there's some minimums. <laughs> like the female might start at 8 strength, and if you had an 8 strength, that could really, uh, really hurt you. But the, the human male has at least a 12 strength. So that's just something to consider there. A lot of things you just kind of glance over, don't pay much attention to uh, in other games. Uh, here's going to be vital. So let's just look down this list here. We can see the races and abilities. So the dwarves, uh, not particularly strong. They got really good constitutions. So that might be a reason to go dwarf, as <laughs> if you need a reason <laughs> uh, for a kind of, kind of frontline person but everybody's gonna take damage in this game so you're not get, getting off easy there's no safe in the back row kind of a deal uh, so you might want to think about dwarves because they have the 20 constitution they do take a big hit to intelligence and charisma and dexterity so they're uh, kind of rough around the edges I suppose but they could stay alive you know uh, it kind of matters you'd probably rather be alive for one more round and take one more swing <laughs> Uh, than to be dead and if you don't want to die you don't want characters dying in this game because it's got a lot of nasty stuff cost you gold and XP so you don't want that to be happening that's that's gonna be a reload basically uh, let's see man can you imagine playing this on Iron Man mode <laughs> you would truly have to be a masochist to do that to even think about that option all right elves looks like they're they got some advantages in decks and intelligence. That's kind of interesting. So a female elf has a really high charisma. I guess that makes sense. Um, halflings. Looks like they get a little bit better decks. Kobold. You don't see that option too much. You know, it looks like they pretty much suck across the board, so I wouldn't pick that. Half giants. They've got really high strength. That's good. Dex will be low. Con is good. So that half giant's looking kind of appealing. We'll look at some of the other abilities. I made the mistake of having a centaur bard in my last playthrough, and that just did not work out. <laughs> so I wouldn't. Uh, they have like a charge that's supposed to be good. So maybe we might be okay for a frontline fighter, but the. The class I would really consider strongly, the Drakes, they have a breath weapon that I found just really, really nice and useful. Looks like they've got good strength too, so that might be a good candidate. Uh, Mantis, I didn't have one of those in my party, but looks like they have really good decks. So they might be good for a you know ranger type, archer type character. Uh, half Salamander... I did have one of those in my party. I ended up getting rid of her, trading her for an NPC. Just could not keep her alive. Uh, let's see, 18. So I'll have to look at their abilities. Okay, so this will be another big factor here. And then we'll settle on our race and class combos. So let's see, humans get two extra feats at level one. So that's, that does, that's better than it might sound at first. Um, you know, level one is really where you need the <laughs> advantages <laughs> you know I just uh, booted up a party created a uh, party for Icewind Dale yesterday I just kind of wanted to play that a little bit and try to remember because you kind of get this nostalgia for it you don't really remember what it was like but man yeah that game is it's awful to start you create a party you know your party dies first few battles <laughs> you have to reload reload 
And that's with, you know, min-maxing and following uh, guides and everything. So this is nothing new. You know, people might say this game is really difficult, but really it's just in the vein of those older games. Uh, so that's a balance, you know. You get these two feats right off the bat. That could be a, make all the difference in surviving the first few battles. Could be well worth it. You know, even if it doesn't look as good as some of these other uh, these other races. And speed, too, is an, if you look at the speed difference there, that's a 10. Uh, I don't know if these are feet or squares or what, but 30 to 20 is a pretty big reduction in speed. So this, you might be struggling to get the dwarf into, uh, <laughs> into range. Usually not an issue, though, because of the... Unfortunately, most of these battles you won't be able, some of them you will, but most of the time you're just kind of ambushed, um, not necessarily surprised, but uh, kind of stuck where he puts you. <laughs> so so it, it doesn't make that big of a difference being able to uh, run around. Uh, one thing I will say though is that the enemies in this game love to use webs, entangled webs, permanent webs. They love to try to lock you down. And so that's a factor. And also, anything you can do to get additional saving throws, resistance to poisons, uh, elemental magic, acid, fire, etc. Uh, that stuff's going to be pure gold. <laughs> because you're just constantly getting uh, all kinds of dots and nasty things put on your characters and, and level and ability drains and things of that sort. So anything you can do, to, and it's expensive to get it off, so it's better not to get it on. <laughs> so, so I would be willing to take some, some hits in other areas uh, to create characters that are a little bit more resistant, have some uh, bonuses to saving throws. Uh, that could be, again, something you might not think about too much in other games, but here it's going to be vital. Uh, like, like the elf, immunity to sleep effects, that could be huge. Uh, there are plenty of mo uh, plenty of monsters that try to sleep you, put you to sleep. Uh, the AI, just you know, especially towards the end of the, later end of the end of this game, almost every trash encounter, there'll be at least two wizards, clerics in there, <laughs> archers that just never freaking miss, and their arrows have like magic on them. So yeah, <laughs> uh, nothing is wasted here. That immunity to sleep effects will probably prove very useful many, many times. Uh, there's, there's very little here you have to worry about not being useful. Looks like the elf also gets some detection to secret doors, secret compartments, so that might be a really good candidate for a rogue, I'm thinking. Uh, halfling. See, plus two to all saving throws. That is really nice. Plus one size bonus to AC and attack. Again, really nice. Weapon damage reduced. So there's the trade-off. Skill, access, narrow tunnels. So there'll be little moments in the game. You won't see this too much, but every now and then there'll be a little spot. And if you have the right character with you, you can do something that otherwise you wouldn't be able to do. Uh, increases the replay value. Uh, but also gives you a little bit more justification for picking one race over another. Maybe you're willing to suffer some penalties to be able to do that. Of course, it's not apparent on your first playthrough, is it? <laughs> uh, let's see, the Cobalt. Natural armor bonus. That's nice. Size bonus. They can do the narrow tunnels as well. Weapon damage reduced. So basically like a halfling, but you're getting those... Uh, you miss out on this. What do you miss? There's a little difference there. So I guess you trade AC for the uh, saving throws. I don't think that's worth it. The saving throws are going to be huge. Half giant weapon damage and grapple rolls increased. Again, something that could be really useful in this game. There's a lot of grappling. There's ways to make grappling and bull run or bull rush and uh, uh, what else is there? Disarming, tripping, fainting, sundering. <laughs> uh, lots of those little abilities can, if you take the right feats, you can basically get those for free every round and it'd make a big difference. There's lots of uh, spots, as we'll see, where you have to push people into things, push them onto traps, push the monsters onto traps, try to avoid yourself <laughs> uh, from getting uh, pushed and pulled. That's a, again, it plays a bigger difference than you might realize when you're creating a party. What am I, half giants? Uh, 
grapples. So if you want a grappler, this would be the way to go. You do take a penalty to AC. You can move heavy items. I actually remember I had a half giant in my other party. We, I use that quite often, so that could be definitely something to consider. Centaurs. So they get this charge, which is nice. 1d6 points of damage when charging. You know, you figure you get to charge maybe once in the battle. You don't always get to use that. A lot of times you won't be able to. Plus four bonus versus tripping, which makes sense. They are four-legged. <laughs> uh, you don't get tripped all that often. At least I didn't. Uh, bull rush, it's more of a concern. So you'd be a little bit more stable on your feet, obviously. Greasing and things. However, I think the webbing is what's the biggest problem. So that, that wouldn't be all that wonderful. I'm not sure what special skill endurance means. And I should explain that one. Does that mean extra uh, constitution? I don't know. The Drake. You see that they get a lion breath weapon. You can you can get a feat that lets that turn into a cone. And you can even make it so that it doesn't affect your allies. So that's absolutely huge. It's a wonderful <laughs> ability to have especially at the starting thing, and it's something you could use every battle, which is very nice, because you'll run out of spells really quick. Hardly any chance to rest in this game. You're just going to be stuck with these wizards and spellcasters. They'll use up their slots, and that's it. <laughs> you know, good luck with the sling or whatever. Uh, with this Drake, you know, every battle you could use that breath weapon. It can be used once every three rounds, it says. So maybe even multiple times in a battle. So that is something to really consider, I recommend. <laughs> I'm not sure what glide means, but okay. Uh, Mantis can't wear armor. Can wield up to four light weapons. Well, that would be pretty cool. I guess that's a lot of attacks. Plus three natural armor. Rake when grappling. So this is, again, a really, if you want to do a lot of grappling type stuff, that sounds like a good light sleep. Oh, I'm curious what this is. Do they explain? I guess we could look at the sub-races here. And then the half salamander, 1d6 fire damage on all attacks. So I put that on, I had a samurai character with that, thinking it would be awesome. And it was pretty cool at first, but it just didn't scale well. Uh, stacks with elemental weapon damage, special skills detect heating and cooling. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at some of these. He's got some recommendations. Let's take a look at what he recommends. Here's a chart providing information on the main abilities of each player's class. <laughs> oh yeah, a lot of classes. We'll come back to this. I guess in a minute I want to look at the, the classes. So let's let's see what they recommend for each one. So he does have the the tips in here for you. All these tables. I want to do a Drake because again I just found that so incredibly useful. Oh, there's also sub races. I forgot about that. Let's see, Drake. Fire Drake, Barbarian, Bards, Champions, Death Knights, Druids, Fighters, Gladiators, Monks, Paladins, <laughs> Psy Warriors, Samurai, or Storm Warrior. Okay, so they want to go Barbarians and Fighter types for Drakes. Makes sense. Pretty sure my Drake in my party was a, was a Druid. Well, let's just go ahead and start. So we'll do a male uh, race Drake. Now, unfortunately, uh, the models don't really change that much. You know, it, it would have been nice to have like Centaur look different, but <laughs> oh well, you can't have everything. Theater of the mind. Yeah, here's a little breakdown of the different kinds of Drakes you could make. You lose an ability point to get cold breath instead of fire. You know, a little bit of that, a little bit of the other. Uh, most of the monsters that have resistance. Uh, you know, maybe he's actually done the math and made it so that the uh, there's more, less cold resistance all across the board than fire. I don't know. Wow, lightning, you have to lose two ability points for that. So I'm going to assume that he's done the math or worked it out so that it's worth trading three ability points to get 
acid instead of fire. You know, I just did the fire and I, I didn't find that many times when I couldn't affect at least a few mobs with it. Well, let's see, do we want to change here? <laughs> see if we can find a way to make him look a little bit more Drake-like. Looks kind of Drakey. Auto create token, all tokens, high resolution. Let's just go with this. Okay, then look at all these classes. My goodness. <laughs> wow. Uh, so some of the ones I, I had the bard. I didn't play barbarian last time. You know, most of these you might realize, recognize from other games. Cyanosis are kind of interesting. I, I'm really kind of going to uh, pick at least one Cyanosis. Maybe a Warlock for this game. I have, there's a Warlock NPC you could pick up. And the cool thing about her is she has uh, both uh, wizard spells and these psionic abilities. So very powerful character. You could really do a lot with that. Probably worth serious consideration. Let's see, how do I get the help back to the help screen? Oh boy. <laughs> Let's just think first about a barbarian. Okay. So they get fast movement, they can rage once a day. I thought that was once a battle. Pretty sure my other seemed like I was getting more rages than that. Maybe there's some features you can get where you can just do it over and over. But anyway, Rage is good. Let's see if it tells you what Rage does. Plus four competence bonus to strength, plus four bonus to con. Take two off your armor class. Uh, da, 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 da. He gets scales a little bit with levels. He can be refreshed by a fatigue spell. I didn't find that to be much of an issue. Okay, starting a Rage is a free action. Uncanny dodge. Let's just go with the Barbarian to start off with. It's a good, pretty good, easy call to make, I think. I'll just go awful good. Now here we are with these rolls. Let's see if we can... I guess we're stuck with 75 points. You can do maximum ability scores. Is that cheating at this point? <laughs> Uh, you know what? I don't. I think even if you put it on that, you can't get like twenties for everything. So yeah, it's you know the game is hard enough. You might just want to go with that. Now this is something you might think. Oh, I'll just lower some of these like wisdom, get that down. But really, I find everything here is useful. Like there's some pretty cool feats you can get your intelligence is high like this battle cunning and flanking so you really put a lot of thought into it you don't you can't just have this you might go well so barbarians don't need to be smart give just knock this down to like two <laughs> and no uh, because again the you get those feats and those you don't want to be vulnerable to uh, spells and, and abilities of monsters so let's just go ahead and set that there Continue on. Oh, name Amra. Where was the name? Here we are. Where's the name? I want to change this. You know, since the match yet, unfortunately, it looks like we're nearing our final episodes. <laughs> I wanted to uh, honor some of the oldest supporters of the show in this episode. And uh, so these uh, character names will be some of the the first and longest supporters of match yet. And Spence is one of those. Help make it happen. So hopefully he will enjoy being a lawful good barbarian, Drake. What's legendary weapons? You know, I've played this all the way through and there's still so much stuff. What is legendary weapons? Let's see what he can do the index maybe. Character skills. Okay, what's... Well, I guess I'm going to have to go through this big list. <laughs> Legendary weapons. What's legendary weapons? Um, okay, did you see it? 
<laughs> Generic skills. Legendary weapons and armors listed there. I'm guessing maybe. Maybe that means like there's certain items that only drop for them. Let's see here. We get a list of them. Da, 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 da. Specific skills, classes. I don't even see it on this list here. Let's see. Legendary weapons. <laughs> classes in general. All right, I don't want to spend all day on it. It's probably just guessing. There's certain weapons that won't, would, would either not drop if you didn't have that, or maybe you couldn't use it. So one of those, probably. Okay, Spence, I think we're good to go with you. Okay, weapon groups. Ability scores. Alright, so these are... Um, I'm trying to remember if it won't let you equip these items. And I don't even think you can equip an item in this game if you don't have proficiency with it. Pretty sure that's true. Or it says there that you could, but you take a negative four. I guess you can equip it, but you just you take such a heavy penalty that it's not worth it. All right, I don't want a barbarian with a bow. Um, although there are certain situations, again, if you get stuck in a big web, you can't move. You know, you could spin round after round trying to break out of it, or maybe you just switch to a bow. <laughs> Uh, but I'm pretty sure even in that circumstance, you, you take some penalties to your aim, so it might not even be worth it. I always like to think of a barbarian as having a a spear, or like a um, maybe a two-handed sword, big axe, you know, that, that sort of thing. So the reach weapons... Uh, when using weapons in that group, someone to give me a little bit more info about reach weapons. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember how they work in this game. I know you get a little more range with them, but uh, yeah, I don't think... Uh, which ones are... These are considered spears. Wow, so a halberd and a spear is not a ranged wep reach weapon. Only these three. Glaives, gus arms, and rancers. As primary, you gain plus two on this arm. So if you use this gus arm, you'd be really good at tripping people. Which that can actually be a really nice thing to do, because when they stand back up, you get an, usually get an attack of opportunity on them. And again, you can make it free to get trips. So that might be something very tempting. Why don't we go ahead and get reach as one of our options. And it might go... Uh, what else? I kind of almost feel compelled to go axes, but uh, we'll go with... I get four picks. <laughs> Let's go spears. You know, for some reason, I don't know if it's ra how random the weapons and items you find are. I find a lot of picks for some reason. Lots of magical, really strong picks, and I was always like, man, I wish I had that. Uh, Two-handed sword, come on, you gotta have that for Barbie. Get one more, I guess we'll go axes. So I don't have any ranged weapons on him. That maybe come back to bite me, but. Ooh, and then we get the all important feet. Let's see what improved rage is. This feat increases the duration of rage by two rounds. In addition, the character can rage one more time per day. So that's probably the one you'd want. On the other hand, cleave. This is great. You know, you kill one thing, you get a free attack on another thing in the same round. Battle Cunning. Your critical hit confirmation rolls gain a bonus equal to your intelligence modifier. Okay. <laughs> now, I don't know if you're like me. You're, you're probably more used to 5th edition rules at this point. But there's, there's some fussy stuff in these older games about... I think this is 3.5 if I'm not mistaken. 
and I could be wrong about that, but they could, there's a lot of extra fussy stuff about critical hits. So let's see if we could remember how this works. All right, so you roll a 20, or some you can get certain things that you could make it a 19 or a 20, but uh, it doesn't need to come up to 20. So let's say you roll a d20, and you, you roll a 20. Okay, so that's just the first step. <laughs> so let's see, how does it work? Then you got to roll it again. Call that a critical roll. All the same modifiers as the attack roll you just made. So I guess any kind of proficiency bonuses. If the critical roll also results in a hit against the target's AC, then it's a critical hit. So the key difference, you don't have to roll two 20s in a row. You know, that would be... You basically would never do that, right? The odds are <laughs> really small. Uh, but you do have to, like, get high enough to actually penetrate the... Uh, uh, be better than their AC. So if their AC is like 12, you know, anything above the 12 would be crit. So, but there is a good chance you won't get that second roll, as you know. Increased threat range, increased critical multiplier. So there's all kinds of little extra ways to boost up that critical idea. So let's just take another look at that then. Battle cunning. Your critical hit confirmation rolls gain a bonus equal to your intelligence modifier. I think my intelligence was, let's go back and look at that, 16, right? So I think that's, uh, oh, I wish it had the, uh, the, oh, there we go, okay. So as a 16, I get a three. So that adds another three to that roll, so that would make it much more likely to get to actually land a critical hit with that. Now I hesitate though because again with somebody if I am using these big slow weapons uh, you know the again you're not getting that many attacks so there's not that many opportunities to get a crit you know I'd focus more on crit if I had dual weapons or lots of attacks you'd have better odds of it of it happening Whew, I'm putting more, I'm putting a lot of thought into this <laughs> uh, however if we scroll down a little bit here you notice we got some improvements we can make to our Drake breath weapon. One of them is uh, make it a cone instead of that line, which that's really nice. You know, you think about it, you're kind of up in the, in the midst of battle, you just whoo, could be really cool. We can get more damage on it, bigger radius on it. You can also do the shaping, which this will uh, protect our allies. So you don't have to worry about if somebody's in the way. Uh, it just goes right past them. I find uh, th these breath weapons again, I use it every battle. Very extremely useful. Made a huge difference. But then again, <laughs> I notice <laughs> we've got uh, fire resistance, cold resistance. This could end up being huge. Uh, the blind fight, again, one of these things you don't normally worry about but here just everything is concealed I mean it's just every seem like every monster is concealed to some extent and with this if you pick up this feat then every time you miss because of concealment you re-roll your miss chance percentile roll one time to see if you actually hit so this could again make all the difference because <laughs> believe me a lot of stuff is concealed uh, okay though Oh, and this Die Hard, another one that's just absolutely essential. So if you look at this, your character automatically stabilizes when knocked unconscious and dying, which that's going to happen a lot. But here's the nice thing. In addition, at the end of every battle, the character automatically recovers 1d8 hit points, 1 point per level. That is huge. Again, you're going to run out of spell slots like that. Uh, there's very limited chances to, to rest. <laughs> You may, may have a lot of potions, but you don't have unlimited potions and foods to uh, to raise those those health. Basically, there's a lot of points in this game where you got to go through long areas with no rest, using up all your resources. So I think it might be worth taking this die hard on every character. I don't know if we need it right away, but it's certainly one of the ones I would pick up relatively early. And plus, this idea about being uh, automatically stabilizing is huge too because you don't want characters dying if you can possibly help it. So all this, everything looks great, but I'm going to go with that just because again, I just 
especially with this guy being on the front, I don't even want to think about him dying all the time. <laughs> what are we, 30 minutes into the video? I think we have one character made. Yay! Alright, let's do it again. Uh, try to speed things up a little bit here. Uh, I want to get back to my list of... Uh... So I feel like we need maybe a cleric, but I might want to look and see, uh, let's see, where's that list of, uh, here we go. I wish there was a list, let's look at these, uh, yeah, classes a little bit here. Uh, barbarian, bard, bishop, what's a bishop? A priest who dedicated themselves to the study of divine domains. They gain special powers, but lose access to some of the high-level divine spells of clerics. Well, that sucks. <laughs> have up to six domain powers. They also have the potential to use turn in dead. Okay. Bishops are inferior to fighters, but better than wizards. So what are the advantages of these over clerics? They can cast spells even when they're wearing heavy armor. Can a cleric not wear heavy armor? <laughs> Domain powers. So I guess this one is more about these domain powers, yeah. Domain powers. Healing domain do not need to be activated. Let's take a look at some of these. Look at the depth of this game, you know. Just amazing. Look at all those domain powers. I mean, the replay is just endless. <laughs> I don't know if I like the sound of this bishop though. Let's see what else we have. I'm thinking maybe a paladin. Uh, where's my glasses go? I didn't have a paladin the first time. Yeah, so the paladins have spells. Psychic warrior. Cleric. Uh, I don't want to go as cleric. You know the druid was good too. Oh, I don't know. Crap. Why don't we just go with a paladin and get ourselves another heavy? Uh, we'll come with this guy. Uh, Seth. You know, Seth has to be the bard, right? We'll make uh, Matt. This isn't me. This is another Matt, <laughs> by the way. Okay, let's see. I want to make a... Let's see what he recommends. For paladins. Uh, paladins. Humans. Hill dwarf, mountain dwarf, elves. Halflings. Half giant, centaur. Looks like maybe. Uh, dwarf. <laughs> dwarf. Uh, definitely don't want a negative two to wisdom for a pally. Uh, this one, I like the idea of getting that plus four versus those things. Yeah, just go with a no change, though. I have to make him a little bit shorter since he's a dwarf, right? Oh, that just changes the color. <laughs> okay. I look kind of vaguely dwarfy, I suppose. Yeah, dwarves need a big beard. There we go. Okay, let's go with this. I wonder what a champion is. The war priest. Isn't that basically a paladin? <laughs> Just like clerics. So what's the difference in this and a paladin? Oh my goodness, there must be subtle differences. Wisdom. So they go with wisdom instead of uh, charisma, I suppose. I think the, isn't the paladin? It's charisma for their spells, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere. No, it says the leading ability for paladin spells is also wisdom. Why do they need charisma then? Maybe, did I just make that up? 
With this ability, Smite Evil, Paladin gains an attack bonus equal to his Charisma modifier. If the creatures are evil, there's plenty of evil. I don't know, let's just go with Paladin. So he didn't bump the Charisma up very high by default, looks like. Oh, I guess they only get 96 tops. So you see that the charisma is only 14. Yeah, it just says it's useful for paladins, so I guess it's not quite as important as I thought. So strength, con, everything else looks good. Let's go with this. Look at dwarf sense. What is dwarf? So much detail in this game. My goodness, I'm just going <laughs> to not even worry about it for now. <laughs> Okay, Matt, uh, you're the pally. We're going to want a shield on you, I think. Do we have shields as an option? Picks, one-handed swords. Yeah, I probably want that one. Natural weapons. What's a natural weapon? Light swords, I guess that would be like a short sword, right? I got kind of confused because the uh, rapiers was in a weird spot, as I recall. Yeah, so a light sword is a dagger, short sword, sickle, and kukri. But a dagger is considered a simple weapon. And where are rapiers? There's a rapier. And I just make that up. I don't see rapier anywhere. Weapon finesse. No. Oh, wait, I saw it. Rapier. What is rapier considered then? Light weapons. Uh, just the basic weapons. Natural weapons. There it is, rapier. So one-handed sword. So it's in the same category as uh, long swords. See, I thought I was thinking it would be a light sword. <laughs> but okay. I don't know if I want my paladin with the light sword. Uh, you know, hammers. That's probably a good pick because even though maces, now how is a mace significantly different than a hammer? You know, that I would like to know. Seems like it's the same basic concept, right? But, there are lots of things that are resistant to sharp weapons, so we might want to pick up hammers, too. And, uh, what else? Uh, maybe do maces. Just in case I find a really good mace or a hammer. Alright, same deal with him. I think Die Hard is just the obvious pick. Fortunately, we get lots and lots of uh, feats throughout the game, so it's, you don't have to put that, you don't have to sweat it too much. Okay, we got... Um, let's do Jordan now. What else do we need? We got a, we got a Dwarf Paladin and we made a Barbarian. Probably want one more frontline troop. <clears throat> Maybe, you know, I'm kind of tempted to try this half salamander again, even though I didn't have a lot of luck with it the first time. But this 1d6 fire damage on all attacks is pretty cool. Let's see if we can get a little more info. I wonder if the... Uh... Yeah, there we go. So is it just 1d6 forever? <laughs> Do you get to enhance that along the way? Looks like possibly you can. Well, let's just try it. Let's see what he recommends. I really think we need a cleric. Yeah, they're on here. Uh, towards the bottom of the list, but I guess we can get by with a half salamander. For a cleric. 
We're going to need the cleric to be doing it in melee range because a lot of their spells are very limited range. So you want them up. Gonna looks kind of fire salamandery. Why not? Okay, and do the... So many options. You're always tempted to try something a little bit more unusual, like maybe a psychic healer. Oh, well, he's getting 104 points. Alright, so he's got him set up with an 18 wisdom, high charisma, high strength, high con, pretty much high everything. Wow. Healing class skills. So that looks pretty strong there. Looks good. Oh, what am I missing? Oh, we want to do good, I guess. Okay, then we get to pick spells. And I'm looking for anything that lasts all day first. You know, obviously you're going to want Cure Light Wounds. That's a no-brainer. Uh, Shield of Faith lasts 10 rounds. I like summoning. I've always enjoyed summoning extra monsters. I think Blast is kind of a no-brainer, too. This one's ten rounds. You know, magic Stones. There's some feats you could take just around that spell, I noticed. I didn't really use it last time. Maybe I should have. You know, kind of Shield of Faith. That'll give him some survivability. I think Divine Favor gives you yeah, some bonuses to uh, attack damage and saving throws. That sounds great. It doesn't last very long, but that's okay. There's meta, meta feats, meta magic that we can use, of course. <laughs> Let's see, remove fatigue. Oh, I don't know. That might be useful since I have a barbarian. Also improves the exhausted condition. Let's go ahead and pick it up. Uh, got lots of spells to play with here. Now I think maybe Bane. Uh, it's just the opposite of Bless. What does Command do? Single living creature in close range falls to the ground and is unable to act for one round. Doesn't sound all that great, but uh, could turn the tide, perhaps. Oh, here we go. Protection from alignment. Duration until end of combat. And that gives you a plus two bonus to armor class and saving throws. That would be great. Although it's kind of a choice between this, I guess, being able to summon an extra creature. That's a tough call because they love to attack whatever you summon so they can get them off you and onto the summon creature. But I'm hoping I'll be able to get some summoning going with my spellcasters later on. Okay, you can see there's a ton of these. My goodness. <laughs> the recommendations, that would be nice. Cleric. Domain powers. I don't really want to go through this giant list. <laughs> Let's just take a look at a couple of them. All your cure and mass cure spells are empowered for free. The healing is multiplied by 1.5. Your curing power is also affected if you have the curing domain. Your heal and mass spells are increased by 10 points. Supernatural. That just sounds hard to beat. You know, dude, this guy is going to be doing a lot of my healing for me, so I think I might have to pick that as one. Now, last time I went with this curing, and if I recall... Yeah, this takes blind off people and uh, heals up some hit points. That, you know, it's it's a good one, but I I noticed there were lots of uh, moments in the game where it said if I had mysticism as a domain power, I could do special things. And I didn't have this on anybody, so I just had to miss those. So I probably would want to pick this just so I could see what that content was. So you gain the feats Cleric Spell Focus. Oh wow, you get a lot of great, a lot of great feats. Spell focus is great. Spell penetration is great, as well as plus two divine bonus on all concentration checks. 
The effects of your blessed vain prayer and greater prayer increase by one point? Okay, we're going. I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> I'm sold. Mysticism, baby. Yeah. Okay, we're good to go here. And we get a feat. And again, I think just as tempting as this other stuff may be, Die Hard is just my default for all characters. Okay, we've got our front row taken care of, I think. Let's think about some of these other classes. Uh, what else might we want? You know, I'm not, I've never had a really good archer-like character. I just was having such a hard time. I had a rogue in my party with just insane decks, and they just missed almost every time. I think you really have to specialize. And of course, there's ammo, of course, you know. It's expensive. <laughs> you have to find steel bars basically to melt into uh, arrowheads, I suppose, and make arrows. It's just that hard to find. Uh, you know, rangers sometimes are... Which of these? I don't see anything like just straight up... Can I get a list of classes? Let's take a quick peek at a ranger. They're depicted with a bow. Says the archery expert. Okay. Uh, how do they, do they get precise shot, careful shot, archery bonuses, critical shot? Okay, so maybe that's the problem. Maybe you have to be a ranger <laughs> if you want to be any good with a bow. Okay, I'll go ahead and try that. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Let's see what he recommends here for a uh, ranger. Humans, half-elf human, elves. That makes sense. I kind of want to... I've been rereading uh, Lord of the Rings, and of course, you know, Strider. Such an awesome character. <laughs> I think we had Jordan last time. Let's go Christopher. Male... Elf. Eh, just leave that alone, I think. Uh, gonna, there we go. <laughs> I don't think elves have beards. Alright, let's go with that. I oh, why did I change the name? Hope it didn't Why did you see that? Change the name on me. Christopher the Elf. Ranger. I'm excited about a ranger. Select alignment. There's probably somebody watching this like, No, the rangers suck. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't pick a ranger, my god. Okay, we're going to go with that. Pick some groups now. I'm guessing bow? <laughs> ah, crossbows. Ah. What is a natural weapon? Jesus, I, so much to this game. All natural weapons. What is a natural weapon? Spike gauntlets, a quarter staff. Creatures that have a natural weapon. There's a little bit about. Wielding a reach weapon. You know, I, sw I swear that my characters with reach weapons were getting like free attacks somehow. And anybody came into their range. I don't know if I'm just completely making that up. <laughs> or if there is some feat. Anyway, we won't go with natural weapons. Uh, <clears throat> I guess maybe one handed swords. Could be like Strider. Hopefully, his sword won't be broken. Although the weapons do break, <laughs> equipment does break, <laughs> uh, because of course it does. Maybe it's for the other weapon. Uh, maybe hmm, it's a tough call. Kind of torn between spears and light swords. Let's go with the light swords. So. Okay. And again, this will be easy. I noticed there were some spell resistance options. I want to pick those up very quickly. 
Okay, two more. I guess I'll wait on the name. Let's do. I want to go with Warlock, I think. And recommended sub races. There we go. Warlock. Although I'm kind of tempted to go with the Cyanosis just because I haven't played one. Sorcerer. Not sure what the. Let's take a look at Warlock. Because the Warlock they give you later on has psionic power and... Yeah, look at this. They get psionics and spells. That's powerful. So I'm definitely going with a Warlock. It looks like a Moon Elf might be a good choice. I've already got an Elf, though. A Lightfoot Halfling. Well, let's just see what that looks like. The halflings, they must get some uh, bonuses, I suppose. <laughs> Maybe being a halfling would mean they don't get hit as much. A little dex bonus, that'd be nice. Okay, let's see. Class. Warlock. Oh, looks smart. Uh, could I have an evil character in the party? Oh, how's that gonna work? I'm make it neutral. So wisdom is high, it's high. Very important for... I guess it's there for warlocks. They must get a bonus to their wisdom score. He's not very strong, he doesn't have too high of a con, but uh, I'm gonna go with this. Acrobatics. Oops. So he's small size. Small size do for you. Where is small size? <laughs> and character skills takes me back to this page. Very helpful, Pierre. Okay, somewhere on this list is small size. Elf, halflings. Small size. Gains access to tunnels. No. Okay. Go with that. And get our spells. And again, the idea is what's going to last all day. Mage armor, no brainer. That lasts until the end of combat. Now, for this, I do think I want to get some summoning going. Oh, what did I pick? An elemental? You can also get a skeleton. Is that scale? For every caster level beyond one, the summon creature will gain one additional hit to die. You know what the heck, I'll take that too. I'm thinking like warlocks, you know, they summon stuff, right? Protection from arrows, believe it or not, this is might actually be a game changer. That lasts until you rest too, so that, that might be... They love the enemies in this game are very smart. You know, they see that warlock back there. They're like, "Oh hell, oh hell no!" He's summoning, summoning crap. Doink! You know, he's dead. He ain't summoning nothing now, is it? <laughs> oh, but I got a little thing called protection from arrows. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how well it works. <laughs> but that's two slots gone already if I go with that. Uh, doesn't he have one? Yeah, Force Shield in combat. Protects you against magic missiles. As well as give you a little armor class bonus. So, you know, worst comes to worst, you can activate the old Force Shield. I think I'll hold off on that, though, because I'm pretty sure... Oh, look at this. You get Blur, that lasts until rest, too. Gives you 20% concealment. Okay, that's again, no-brainer. Now, initially, some of this stuff like burning hands would be great, but you just, unless you get, once, until you get the uh, meta magic that lets you, uh, you know, not burn your friends, the friendly fire is going to be terrible with that. Uh, Gust of Wind. 
You know, here's one you probably would think, why would anybody want that? But again, you can see there's quite a bit of use to it. If they're on grease, this, if they're on a pit, a pit of grease, you can knock them down with this. Looks like they take damage too, so that's a good combo. You can knock them prone, move them back into a trap. So that's a lot more useful than you might think. So go ahead and take... Is that six already? Oh wait, we gotta clear this. Uh, <laughs> let's try this again. Let's only do one of the summons. Go to the elemental, I think. And let's pick the blur again. Armor, the gust of wind. We want grease. Oh, and the arrows. Okay. All right, then we get some psionic powers. Now these I'm less familiar with, but uh, see, like this one gives you another plus four shield bonus, and I'm pretty sure that does stack with the wizard spell. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it, I'm sure it's all going to take advantage of it. Here's one that gives you some thicker skin, lasts until the end of the, uh, lasts until you rest. So again, something you put on and you got it all day. It's great. Unless somebody, uh, unless somebody, of course, um, dispels you, which they will. Melee touch attack. Oh, I do not want this guy. That was a problem with the warlock you get later in the game. She's got all these great abilities, but her dex and strength are so low. Anything that requires a, a, actually connecting with a <laughs> touch, <laughs> forget about it. Just miss every time. Now there is yet another of these uh, armor spells. What did, I, what did I get up before? Inertial armor. Oh wait, oh wait, oh wait, wait, wait. Force screen. Oh, this is only until the end of combat, I see. Okay, so the one I, one I picked is the... Yeah, these are good until you rest again. So definitely want those. Ooh, crystal shard. Touch attack. I don't want to be close range. <laughs> it's adrenaline rush. No. Energy rage. Use an energy type. No save. Range touch attack to target in close range. Ooh, entangling ectoplasm. God, this is some tough calls, isn't it? Range touch attack. Let's see, what is his, uh... I have to go back, unfortunately. I want to look at the dex. So the dex is very high. Okay. Have to do this again, unfortunately. So I could probably connect with some of those spells that are like... Uh, that I make a range touch, range touch attack, right? That's what that uses. Uh, where was it? Let's do the thickened skin and the inertial armor again. Energy Ray is a ranged touch attack. In this case, cases, the attacker makes a touch attack roll either ranged or melee. When you're the target of a touch, your armor class doesn't include any bonuses. So it doesn't regard armor shields, but you still have to connect. Not sure what this goes on then. I guess they could still dodge it, basically, right? That sounds pretty pretty good. Does have to be close, but we'll take it. And I think maybe now this is a free action. Those are always worth considering. Duration four rounds. You get a plus four bonus on all grapple checks. So if he were to get grappled, which does happen, I guess this is for me grappling somebody though. So less useful. <laughs> Oh, what else do we want? I got two more. Uh, crystal shard, close range touch attack. Probably not ever connect with that. Enhanced weapon. Don't really see this guy using a lot of weapons. Single target takes 1d10 points of damage. Willpower save negates. I can scale it up with some more points to do more damage. Sicken. Melee touched attacks. Don't. Cones. 20 foot 
Radius Cone Spell. Targets fall prone and take 1d4 points of bludgeoning damage. That actually sounds pretty good. I might take that as one. And I guess for my other one, I'm kind of tempted to go with uh, just Grease, just to have some extra Grease opportunities. Yeah, I think that's probably the way... Ooh, I like this one, though. It's a medium range, 30-foot caster-centered circle, or Shaken. I think if they're shaken, attack rolls and saving throws decrease. So that's actually that'd be pretty good debuff to throw on people. Maybe I'll pick that. Ooh, and I still get one more. Let's see what is it gonna be? Not that. You know, maybe the makes a single target entangled but not stuck. Okay, that's a subtle difference. It's escaping me. <laughs> <laughs> Entangle. They move slowly. They lose the ability to charge. They lose some attack and deck. Oh, a lot of decks is gone. Concentration checks required. So it could function as somewhat of a semi-effective uh, silence type of deal. All right, and I'm having fun. <laughs> you. <laughs> Uh, let's go. Die hard. Well done. Okay, Ed. Uh, who was I working on? She spent so long I forgot who that was. Was that? Oh, I just gave it a name, Pendragon. Oh, can I edit this character? I might be stuck. I'm not going to go through all that again. Sorry, whoever. Somebody will just have to be known. <laughs> As the, but their, their name was... Uh, uh, Simon. Alias Pendragon. <laughs> Alright, we got one more. And I need to make... Uh, I haven't got a bard in the party, but I guess we're just not... Oh, no bard. That's going to be rough. I usually like to have a bard in the party, but I, I feel like we just have to have a wizard if we have, want to have any chance of surviving. Scaly Cobalt? Really? I'm just going to go human. Human, yeah, southern. He'd be a good old southern boy. Name of uh, uh, Seth. You know what? Let's do this. Seth Simon. <laughs> Seth Simon. <laughs> Here, do them both. Okay. Select class. We've got a... Hmm. Well, that's a tough call. Just feel compelled to go wizard, though. Awful good. might want to pick something besides a human. Let's go back to our... Let's see, we got an elf there who is a... High elf. <laughs> They're high all the time. <laughs> so maybe... Uh, Seth Simon could be an elf too. Let's just see these... don't like the sound of those other options. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Stygian human. I didn't see gray elf as an option. Or maybe I just missed it. Yeah, just for fun, let's just see what the kobolds offer. I don't remember them looking too good. See what the kobolds offer. I don't remember them looking too good. See what the kobolds offer. They sounded kind of like halflings without the benefits. Uh, class. Wizard. Awful good. 
Oh, he still gets an 18 intelligence. Small size Arcana. He doesn't get that many ability points. Dex is nice and high. Strength is okay. Oh, what the hell. What the hell. I'm probably going to regret this. Or we'll go with a kobold <laughs> wizard. <laughs> All right, so I think it'll be the same choices here, basically. I kind of wonder why I didn't just make two warlocks. Chromatic orb is good. And let's see, do the grease, gust of wind, and grease. Protection from arrows. Hopefully, later I'll be able to pick up magic missile off a scroll or learn it later. Ooh, celestial body. Oh, so I'm gonna have to take a hit to something. <clears throat> I always get these mixed up. I think it's better to take the uh, you know the ones that have that try to affect enemies and they get a good saving throw on it, like enchantment maybe. Although evocation, I'm pretty sure that's the. There's a lot of spells that are like that. Conjuration is summoning things. I usually go with the one that I don't use. Try not to use a lot of necromancy, <laughs> although some of the best destructive games are necroman or spells are necromancy towards the end. But it's just a plus one, a minus one. It's not that big a deal. Let's see. Can we get a list of spells? Oh, they they have their own feats too. So with white wizards, you get grease, fog count, web. That's very, very good. Summon and is enhanced as well. That's probably the one to go with. Let's just peek though at the at the uh, Nocturnus. Raven Fieldman, false life and power for free. Hard wilting as a level seven spell. Wow, that would be. So this one, towards the end of the game, you'd be really rocking. Red Moon Phoenix gives you uh, power versions of Burning Hands, Magic Missile, Shocking Grass, Flaming Spear. Oh, <laughs> that's all the good ones. <laughs> all those would be empowered. Oh, tough, tough call. What about Green Wizards? Dispel, Haste, and Slow at plus one spell level cost. So you could widen those. Basically, you could cast haste and slow on everybody. Cheaper than you could normally. Ay, so tough. This one's sleep color. Mass blur, mass protection. I think it's going to be a choice between the white. Oh, wide versions of those spells. Ah. Hmm. Tough call. Ah. I think I might have to go Red Moon, though. It's just too good to have a... I mean, Magic Missile alone. Use that. It's a lot of enemies, you just can't hit them with anything else. <laughs> And you get that empowered for free, basically. Or uh, cheaper, anyway. Shocking Grasp. Fireball is on here. Oh, yeah, we, we're going to go. We're going to go red. Let's make double sure that's the right way. It's red. Okay, then we get a familiar. And unfortunately, there is no rat familiar. I don't know what you were thinking by omitting the rat. Now really the choice is pretty clear. Uh, anything that gives you initiative, especially on a spellcaster, you gotta go with it. <laughs> you know, turn order is everything. Absolutely everything. You really want these guys going first. You know, I'm almost tempted to grab improved initiative here, but again, I'm going to go die hard. 
Okay, and I think that's all of our characters. Okay, so we're going to uh, start her up. Alright, I've got my little party <laughs> created, and I think I'm going to check this little box for Iron Man mode. And I think I'm going to click it again, because... No. <laughs> I'm being way too silly. Okay, I'm almost scared to press the start button, because, I mean, this game... I would, I would not be surprised if I just lost everybody. First battle, boom, gone, dead. What's it? Please select your avatar. Oh, I guess this is... Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So, like, who's going to be doing my talking for me? Didn't I make a paladin? I know I made a paladin, right? Why is this guy a fighter? Oh, I must have messed up. Uh, okay. I think I got the wrong mat. Oh my god, there's two mats. Oh, okay, 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 e easy, easy fix. Remove character. Yeah, look, there's a mat. Oh, 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 come on, that's a terrible name. Can I name him? Something else? <laughs> oh, thank god. <laughs> uh, let's call him, uh, Ricola. I think that's how you spell that. Probably wrong. But I kind of like that name anyway. It looks cool. Workla. Workla. Paladin Dwarf. Okay. How do I move him up? Make him the front row. Yes. Moving to the front row. Yeah, Mr. Workla. The Paladin Dwarf. And I think as a pally. Doesn't he have a decent uh, charisma? Oh no. <laughs> okay, who's got a good charisma score? 16. Uh, 16. How about Christopher? 18. Okay. Let's make Christopher the avatar. Alright, let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and keep him in the back, though. Here we go! <laughs> Prologue! Your valiant party of adventurers has heard sinister rumors emanating from the village of Finchbury. People vanishing, a new dark cult, an invasion of monsters in the sewers, rampaging goblin tribes, even the hobbits are out and about. That's enough for your party to set forth and make a name for itself. As you reach the outskirts of the town, the prospect of a new adventure fills your heart with enthusiasm. I love this painting, too. Very nice. And here we go. And first thing I'm going to do is save <laughs> the game. <laughs> Let's call this new party. So as usual, I'll play... What the hell was that? Did you hear that? I'll play a little bit of this opening. And then we can flip over and I'll show you some of the later party. Okay, I don't remember how to move. We use a right mouse button to just pan around. Yes, my friend. Whoa, what the hell? I sense deception. Stop right there! We are legally... We are legally appointed agents of the law. R, R, R. We have a mandate. <laughs> That's your business. 
Oh, wait, hand over 500 gold coins now, and you can go. And look at that, I just so happen to have 569 gold coins. So, yeah, let's pay 500 gold. Come on. Or we could try some of these other options. I don't have a bard this time. I have a bard in the other party. Great class. They're kind of like uh, super duper buffs and debuffs. And they got some basically spells they can do. I just just didn't want one this time. Didn't end up with one. Maybe I can get one as an NPC a little bit later. Alright, we could try diplomacy. Or we could just attack. Um... Or we could use Christopher's intelligence. Why don't we try this diplomacy option? I think as a human he got that. Sure, here's a man late. Will you pay now? By royal decree, a bearer of his mandate can tax travelers. Yes, he can. So give me the gold. <laughs> yeah, that looks official to me. <laughs> so we can try to talk him into taking 250. Try to intimidate him. Wow, look at that. Hand over your loot, you thieves. Now. Now, it doesn't tell you what any of this stuff's going to do. You can try it. Or, please. We're only doing this to feed our families, I swear. Here, take this. We could only collect 400 gold coins. We'll go far away now. Scram, you pests. Alright, so we could do it that way and uh, not even have to fight. Although I kind of wanted to fight. <laughs> oh well, there'll be other opportunities. So I guess the question is, was it worth missing out on that XP? That is the question. So what is the quick save button? I think it's S. Why am I moving so? Whoa, that's just crazy. Double walk speed. No, that's, that's not on. Turn this back down. Just accelerated. At once. Okay. I seem to be moving a little faster. Who are these guys? Okay. 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 I always fought those folks I've before, but here we go. Here's a battle. It wasn't too hard to find. What am I dealing with here? Ooh, I got me a scorpion. Okay. So now things get interesting. I've got Christopher up first. He's my wizard, right? Which one's this guy? No, he's a he's my ranger. Okay, good. Now, unfortunately, I didn't arm them before battle. Oh, this is my paladin. Jesus Christ. Get, whose turn is it? Christopher's. Okay. And there's his equipment. So he doesn't have a... He's got a bow. Okay. Good. So let's look at our options here. I could delay. This is actually a very powerful option. You know, you can line up all sorts of uh, tandem attacks if you use that strategically. Uh, five foot step. I don't know why I would use it here, but if you if you get in close and you need to get out of range without losing a, without getting an attack of opportunity, you can use that. Charge attack. You know what that does? Range attack. Careful shot. Let's see. It's a full round action, so I couldn't do anything else but this. Rangers make a single ranged attack with a plus four circumstance bonus to the attack roll. The ranger then suffers a negative two penalty to armor class until the next shot. With the improved Careful Shot ability from level 6, Rangers can use Careful Shot with the standard action rather than a full round action. So I think that's probably what we want to do. Just go ahead and pop him. Or try to anyway. Alright, so a chance to hit 65%. He's got soft cover because of course he does. Everybody's covered or concealed in this game. I told you that. <laughs> he is flat footed though. So he's I guess he's kind of stunned, or he's not ready to act yet. Kind of caught him. Not really by surprise, but, uh... 
He hasn't he hasn't moved yet, I think is what that means. Taking any actions yet. Do four to eleven points of damage, and I got a four percent chance of a critical. So a lot of useful info tucked away in that. If you look down here, you can even see my initiative rolls. Encounter challenge rating one, but don't get your hopes up about that. <laughs> All right, let's just do. It. Oh! Ah! You see what I'm talking about? I, not only did I miss, I almost killed my damn. Uh, this is my cleric. I mean, that's what you're dealing with in this. Even with a careful shot, I almost killed my own dude. First damn thing I do is almost kill myself. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and end the turn. That was hideous. Okay, now we have Pendragon, and he's our... He is our warlock, I believe. Right? Let's, now, I should have done this before a battle. Let's go ahead and get his mage armor on. And I think that's about all he can do this round. Yeah, okay, let's go ahead and get him. Try to get him well. Oh, crap. What is going on with that? Okay, this guy almost died, thanks to our pathetic uh, <laughs> ranger skills. It's okay, he's back up. There goes that slot for the day. You know, I probably won't get a chance to rest again for God knows how long. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and leave him there, I think. And we have Spence, who is our, it's our barbarian, right? I should have written this down. Okay, he can't, can't get there to charge. Probably what I want to do, though, is get him maybe here and then do a ready. I could go ahead and rage. Let's go ahead and rage. And then we're ready for approach. Now here's our mage. Let's go ahead and get him out of harm's way. Slap mage armor on. Boom! That was easy. <laughs> Good job, Spence. Man, that made... We got lucky that time, believe me. That could have gone the other way. Let's go ahead and save it. Still a little bit apprehensive because we didn't fight those guys. I don't know how much XP we might have missed out on by doing that. Of course. Okay, let's go on into town, I think. Welcome to Finchberry Travelers. My name is Findle. Have a pleasant stay. Watch out for goblins! Right away. We'll do. Let's see, we have a map here. Can't zoom out. <laughs> What's? Well, I thought there was a big map you could look at. Maybe not. I guess this is what we have to work with. Let's see. Switch display, switch grid. What is that? I've never seen that option before. Uh, switch display? I don't know, it's like old Knights of the Chalice. Combat log. Okay, character sheet, scroll to leader. World map. Oh, maybe I don't have it activated yet. Well, you know you gotta go on inside the tavern. It is an RPG. Yeah, Jorred here, he is a barbarian NPC you can have to join your party. Let's see, how do I talk to Dwarf? Hey, what you want? Hiccups. Rogue pickpocket. Do I not have a rogue in my party? Oh, I don't think I got a rogue this time. What? Who? What did I get to? <laughs> So we got a paladin, a barbarian, a cleric, a ranger, a warlock, a wizard. Okay. So we might need to recruit a rogue. It's kind of my bad there. Let's see what, who we have here. Gaywin, a simple traveling merchant. 
Feel free to browse my wares while they're still available. Select an item in your inventory to show Gawain. That's interesting. I wonder what that's alluding to. You can see there's not a lot of stuff you can buy yet. At least from this guy, but he's got some pretty cool stuff. Sleep arrows. Uh, I don't think I can actually afford... Yeah, there's a magic missile. You know, I think it might be worth it to go ahead and buy that. Uh, let's see, the warlock. And a ranger, maybe? I don't know if they learn spells the same way. Uh, maybe just the magic missile for now. Okay, then I can learn that spell. Drag it over to that little icon. I have learned a spell. And in this game, all the spells are uh, basically like uh, sorcerers in other games. You don't have to select which ones to memorize or anything like that. It's just if you have it, you can cast it. You just have slots, slot system for everybody. Uh, the psionicists are kind of interesting because you can pump up their spells uh, with points. Would I rather have concealment or protection from arrows? Eh, maybe I'll just hold on to that. I don't know if I have to really get into any major fights here. Okay, then there's... Howdy! Hallian. I'm Hallian, the representative of the Guild of Adventures in Finchbury. Would you like to join? Interest fee is 50 gold coins. I think we pretty much have to join him. I don't know how to advance the game otherwise. You are now an associate member of our guild. All newcomers have the rank of associate. Got a new achievement. Okay, are there any jobs available? Yes, I've got work for you. Actually, there are two that need to be done. You can take care of one or both tasks, but you only have a few hours. Now, this is very serious. I messed up the first time, and I went to bed and went, got some rest after the first one. Missed out on the task. You have to do it all now, <laughs> without resting. So you had to hope you didn't blow everything on that first battle. If you, yeah, if you, it says it right there. If you go and rest after completing a task, I just went right over my head, didn't even notice that before. But it says it right here. Or you come back to me to claim your reward, or that, the blue cloaks will take care of any leftover tasks. So we have to do it all before we come back without rest. Ah, oh, and what a quest it is! <laughs> The first problem is a rat infestation. Thank you, thank you. These rats aren't the standard variety, of course. No. They're giant rats. She can handle them just fine, I am sure. I better... If Matt Flippin' Barton can't take care of some giant rats, we got problems. Okay. Uh, the reports have been centering, centering on the ruined... Is that how you spell that? Centering on the ruined building in the northwestern part of the village... Okay, northwestern part of the village on the outskirts. Seek them out and put them down. <laughs> oh, yes, don't you mind if I do? The second problem concerns a beehive. A little beehive. These bees aren't the standard variety, of course. No, they're giant bees. If you're a competent adventurer, you can handle them just fine. You'll find them due west of the ruined building currently invaded by the giant rats. <laughs> Normally, we wouldn't care about giant bees as they aren't especially aggressive, but these are building their hive so close to the village, blah, 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 blah. 200 gold coins for each task. That's what we want to do for sure. Okay, we can look at his equipment. There's a little bag of holding here, which would be Great to have because you guessed it. This game does factor in <laughs> weight <laughs> and encumbrance because, of course, it does. And you've only got these slots, and they fill up faster than you would think. So it might. You want your strongest characters to be able to carry a lot, so you probably want to give them a coffer. But I think that's about all I can. Buy. Now some of these uh, items actually recharge upon rest, so those are worth their weight in gold, but this one is just a one-off thing. 
you know, once you use that fireball, it's gone. It's probably not worth it. You might need it just for this one of these little battles coming up, maybe. I really can't afford anything. I'm going to save my money, I think. And let's talk to the bar owner. Would you like a bedroom? So you don't want to rest yet. Remember that. Who knows what tomorrow will bring. Go talk to the bailiff. Yes. Make yourself at home. Book a bedroom. Buy some food. Play dice. Do you have any jobs? As it happens, there's something you could do. You see those dwarves? They've been drinking too much. Now they're raising quite a ruckus. Try to remove those dwarves. However, this is a very tough, very, very tough battle. Oh, uh, we got a Vicky, the entertainer. Please talk to Maya. Yes, I'd like to listen to your song. The song is called For the Adventurers, written by Timothy Brett. I wonder if that's a real person that maybe contributed to the campaign or something. Forlorn and forsworn, us meandering Memonites did march o'er mountain across glade, through rift off cliff and in cave. Ere expeditious in, in exploring wanton wonders occur and pawn a long lost catacombs in which beasts made their homes. And it goes on <laughs> in similar vein. <laughs> Oh, you want a tipper? Oh, surely we got a tip, huh? Well, I got 10 XP. I guess if we had a bard, we could... bone up their skills a little bit. So I'm kind of reluctant to even talk to this barbarian down here, because I know what's coming. Let's go ahead and book the room. Let's see, food supplies. Yeah, these are basically healing items. There's a... This astral, astragalus is really, really useful because it restores all your expended spell slots. So this can make all the difference in the world if you're, you know, fought like the third out of six battles you got to fight to get out of a dungeon where you're sort of locked in. He loves to, like, lock you into a zone. You can't get out. Uh, it's either reload from before you went in you won't be able to rest. So stuff like that is just way essential. Don't waste them. I can't even afford to buy it right now. And some of these other things, like the power points are for your Sonicist or your Warlock. You know, power points. I think these are hit points. So those are really great to have. I just can't afford it right now. Let's go ahead and look at the bedroom, so... 400 gold coins. I can try to get a discount. Let's do that. Okay, now the room is yours for a mere 200 coins. However, I think... Okay, let's... Did he say... Let's just take a quick look at something. Ah, uh, the drinking problem, yeah. Also, we just get 100 coins. I thought he might let, let us rest for free if we did that, but... I think it's just money. Okay, do that. Here's the Okay. Anything else to do here? Okay. So apparently that merchant is going to be gone tomorrow, so we either have to buy now or <laughs> never more. Once they're gone, they're gone. Those dwarves will be gone too if you rest. So you either have to take care of that now or, or never. And we need every little bit of XP we can possibly get. So we're going to try to do everything. Now it doesn't say anything. I don't know if this chest... You know, is that where we put our unwanted items and come back and get them later? I don't, I don't know. I was never clear on that. Yes, my friend. 
Of course. Easily done. There's a large chest here. You should wait for the room's occupant to leave before investigating it. Okay, I don't want to mess with that. Talk to him. A sneaky looking man wearing a black hooded cloak addresses you in a gruff voice. This is a private room. Who are you and what brings you here? Uh, I just want to say hello. I'm Rothgar, collector of magical gems and other curiosities. I like to play dice. Detect evil. The person looks suspicious. Look for an aura of evil. Yes, do that work, Carla. Workala. Got 50 XP for that. The unmistakable sign of fiendish evil. A scarlet aura. Sonic's detection. Investigate the person's mind. Wow. I didn't have this option the first time. Let's try that. You discovered that Rothgar is a is part of a sinister cabal. You could not learn more without alerting him. Unfortunately, you lack a sufficient proof that would allow you to arrest Rothgar and deliver him to the bailiff. <laughs> Streetwise. I oh, can't do that. Well, we can learn more about the game of dice. I don't really want to. It's just a good way okay. to lose money. Yes. I will Gambling. Well, let's try to take Easy care of the done. giant rats first. Oh, these guys are moving quick. I don't remember moving this fast before. It's like the game is on steroids. <laughs> Did I accidentally speed this up somehow? Accelerated AI. Uh, normal walk speed, double walk speed. So that's... that is off. Maybe it's just quick. Hello there, travelers. I'm Taliana. Nice to meet you. You're new to this region. Have a look at my wares. <laughs> Good equipment may save your life. I like to buy climbing rope for no apparent reason. Do you have that? Yes. Oh, 600 gold coins. I don't even know if I do. Why do I need a climbing rope? I don't know what we need that for. Let's see what else she's got. Sometimes you just want a climbing rope. Okay, we can get some armor. Queer ass. Still doesn't seem right <laughs> to say that word, but that's the way it's pronounced. I noticed on Star Wars, Mandalorian, or Boba Fett, they call it something else. They pronounced it in some other way. Quarus or something? I wouldn't even known it, but I saw the subtitle. But I actually look, looked up the pronunciation, and I, I'm the one that pronounced it right. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Arrows, 45 arrows for one gold, probably something we should invest in. Oh, it's only 25. That's not a whole lot. Now it's only five for one gold, so you see that deal gets worse. <laughs> Get some sling bullets. That's yeah, probably a good investment. Don't want these mages just sitting there doing nothing. Now as for the rest of this stuff. That could probably be useful. It's only one gold. I think that's worth it worth buying. This wand to cure light wounds. Now with these wands you see you get five uh, what does it got? Five charges. You can recharge it but that's going to cost you lots of gold and XP. Yes, you heard me. XP as well. Nice potions. It's always hard to know like what should, you should buy starting out. Let's just see if we can get by with nothing for the moment. So I guess this ranger is what, what I normally would have picked a rogue. Went with ranger instead. Hope that was a good choice. Okay, I think that's probably good. Save it. Of course. I think there's another vendor around here somewhere. 
Yeah, Baldrick. Name's Baldrick. Have you seen my pal Blackadder? Start trading with him. He's got some cool stuff. Half plate armor. Hide. He's got some more arrows. 60 for one. I should have came here and got his 60 for one, huh? Let's go ahead and Look, arrow times 60, buy for one. But I only got 20. Okay, I'm not, I'm not understanding how that math works. He's already got a long bow. I don't think anybody else needs a bow right away. Leather brigandine, brigandine. All these ingots. You need the ingots to make all sorts of stuff. Go ahead and show you that. It doesn't work. I guess this guy can't do it. Let's uh Let me just look at these spells quickly. Go away some good flame, quicksand, energy stun. It's like these are ones from my warlock. Warlock can uh, learn them but not right now. Nothing for the cleric. I don't know if the paladin is... A, I'm not sure if a paladin learns spells. All that works. But anyway, you see these uh, little bars? You get those in, in the course of your adventure. But if you look over here, if I try to forge... It doesn't work. I, know, I guess this isn't the right person to do that. Well, where's the... I'll have to wait and show you that in a Of course. I'll try to remember who it is that has that forging ability. Okay, go talk to the bailiff again. These are difficult times. Yes, they are. As you wish. Oh, what I wouldn't give to be able to zoom out. <laughs> Hello, are you an adventurer? You must be for real. I'm Garrett. Say, my younger brother Perry and me, we're going to be great warriors just like you. Okay. We don't have a sword, so we really can't learn to fight properly. They think we're too young. We're not babies. Say, could you give us a sword, pretty please? Never worked. I was never able to get big adults to do anything for me as a kid. They'd never even give me a sword. I guess it's right for you to learn both swordsmanship. Post days, there's a sword. No. <laughs> Nuts in it for me. <laughs> No, we're too young. You only hurt yourselves. That's probably the right option. No, you think like that too? Come, Perry. We'll find a sword somewhere else. You know, I'd be curious, like, if there's some little kid playing this. They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that little sucker. Look at him, man. He just disturbed a small, it's just a small group of giant racks. They attack immediately. Oh, yes, point? They I do. Punch. Okay, who's up for it? Seth Simon? Well, let's see, doesn't he have... Did I put mage armor on him already? We can check it. Yeah, so he's got a mage armor that gives him plus four. Now again, I don't want to waste any spell slots you really don't want to be oh what the hell's going on with it you don't, you don't want to be using those unless it is just dire need now if we can look over here and see the spence will go after this guy and then the rats will have us go so they, they probably will close the distance there so i'm going to move him there i think and we'll try to do a ranged attack 65% chance of hitting. That's not too terrible. Let's try it. And he missed. Okay, Spence here, I believe, is our... Is this our pally? No, this is our barbarian. That's right. Okay, and since I looked at my inventory, I think that actually... There's something about looking at your inventory. I don't like it when you do that. Okay, let's go ahead and turn the rage on. 
Well, let's see, I raged in that last battle. Let's see if it stuck me with the... Uh... No, I don't have fatigue or exhaustion. Okay, let's go ahead and charge in. 90% chance to hit. Oh, and he missed. 90% chance of hitting, and he missed. Get used to it, folks. <laughs> I've seen 99% I've seen chances miss repeatedly. Just the nature of the of randomness. Never works the way you would think it should work. Because it's random! Okay, who's this guy? Well, he's my paladin, right? So it looks like he... Oh, no, he can't... He can't get over there. You know, it's possible some of them might try to go around. Let's go ahead. Try that. Here's our warlock. Again, no need to be wasting uh, spell slots. You got a lot to do. <laughs> He's got a 50% chance of hitting that one. Let's... Boom! He got his. Three points didn't kill it. It's a ranger, right? It's Christopher. I really wish they had more info on this than just the... You know, for example, I'd love to have hit points. <laughs> I think this is a ranger. Oh, crappy odds. I think... It says it got soft cover or distance penalty. Oh, am I too far away? Really? Okay, yeah, I guess I was... To being real close. Still just a 60% chance of hitting. Okay, got one down. <laughs> Did you see him? Rats don't know what's what. Jordan, you're our. Ooh, this is our. Uh... Let me see if I can execute this. Okay, this is our cleric. But he's he's also got his. Uh... Oh no, which one's the fire drake? Is this not the fire drake? Uh... Yeah, flame brother. Where's your breath weapon? One well, of these should be a breath weapon, eh? Did I miss that somehow? Okay, maybe I missed something there. Okay, I guess I'm just ready him for an attack, too. Oh, you see that? He actually has, even at this early level they've already got ability drains he just drained that guy one dexterity point and I'm gonna have to go pay to have that taken off we'll see it might possibly be a temporary thing but I gotta reload but it oh and see since I reloaded now I can't move <laughs> now I've only got a 25% chance of hitting so you're like is it even worth the cost of the rock Ah, I'll try. And he missed. Okay, now this guy is completely surrounded. And we don't have Whirlwind. We could try some of these other options, but these would cost us actions. So I think we just want to attack. Got his target. Good. Here's Workala. Not. He got his down. Good. Miss. You know, I wonder if it's even worth... Maybe I should just close and use my sword. Let's try that. Boom! Critical hit. <laughs> Alright, so that wasn't so bad. I don't think that was the rats in question, though. No, that was the northwestern part of the village. Well, that was just a little bonus. Now you see what happened though since I took Die Hard. It automatically patched him up. Spence. So instead of having to waste a spell slot or a potion or something like that. It just... He just rolled and he... He was able to heal. Easily done. Very useful. Talk to Zarya. Talk to me whenever you need healing or potions or to enchant a weapon. Okay, here's where I can do the enchantment. So if I forge, you know, you could try to make... It's actually a pretty cool system, but there's a big problem with it, I'll tell you about in a second. But 
Yeah, you could say I would like some, uh, make some. How about a full plate veil? Must be a little bit more realistic. Maybe you want a magic, uh, long sword. Okay, so first you make the masterwork. It has to be at least a masterwork weapon to uh, put any enchantments on it. And I think this also gives you a plus one to something. Yeah, masterwork. Yeah, plus one to attack rolls. I don't think there's a damage bonus. But, you know, you'd hit, you hit more with it. So you could say, that sounds good. All right, it's going to cost you 13 XP and 155 gold. Now, if it's not a masterwork item, so if it's just a regular old longsword, then all you need is 15 gold and one steel ingot. But you're probably going to want to go like that, and you got different materials you can work with, and you can see that XP going up. Let's see, what's the most expensive? Ooh, crystal. It's 893 XP for that, and I think crystal... Uh, yeah, special properties to items allow you to bypass damage reduction to certain creatures. Silver, gold. Uh, says crystal weapons offer a plus one bonus to attack rolls. And eternium weapons offer a bonus to damage rolls. Silver weapons, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's the... Now one nice thing here, we, if we just want to make arrows... For crossbow bolts. Thankfully, all you need is a little bit of gold and a steel ingot. So don't make the mistake I did. I was just selling those ingots because I'm like, I'm not going to spend uh, XP on items. <laughs> no thanks. But it's you should keep them around because if nothing else, you make the arrows. And there is a point, you know, I find uh, they're not so stingy with the XP to where it really hurts that much. You know, if you really need a certain item with a certain perk on it, you know, it's often worth it. You know, especially not at this point of the game. Uh, but certainly later on, we might want to look at that. So I get this magic stone spell here. Go ahead and learn that, I guess. It might come in handy. And I can, I can see what else he has, or she has, so that I know not to pick those spells to learn. <laughs> so I don't need to learn Moderate, Curing, Vest of Vitality, and then all these potions. And I think one of these potions... Uh, let's see. Oh, I thought one of them was like a permanent elixir. Yeah, this is the stone skin are pretty cool because they actually cost you gold to cast. And you can't uh it's a little bit of a pain, so I find it's it's worth it. It's another one of those that lasts all day, too. So it's actually a good potion to have to put on a fighter. But anyway, we're just gonna go with this. Go ahead and learn. I've learned a spell. I never failed to learn a spell. A spiel. <laughs> A little of my southernness coming out in there for you. Well, I suppose it could happen. So you might want to save every time before you try to scribe. Yeah, what do you want? Are there, are there missions? Let's see a group of bandits screaming the corpse of their leader. Oh, I guess that's those guys we fought at the beginning of the game. I guess we had to use the first option. Let's hope they don't come back. We have no problem with already. You know, I probably should have fought those guys. I'm, I'm almost tempted to reload. <laughs> I'm not feeling too good about letting them go, but okay. Let's see. Threat from orcs and goblins. The threat of invasion by the savage species is increasing rapidly. Make yourselves ready. Commander Balthor. He's been hunting a black dragon. Find him and report. Clergy of Palantheus. Find her and destroy the coven. You will be rewarded. It all sounds great. Now, if you this is like the when you're ready to leave the zone, you do the defense of the village. So obviously you don't want to do that right now. 
Let's see, I know the answers to these questions. <laughs> Chaos brings opportunity. I think we're done there. I'll handle it. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm trying to think, is there anything sure. else I need to do? We'll do. At once. At once. Let's see. Oh yeah, I remember this. So Garrett and Perry, those little boys that wanted the sword to play with. <laughs> yeah, they're gone. Okay, we can tell them what we can rat them out. Could you go and look for them there? Where? Cave up north. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll go save your boys, but I don't work for free. <laughs> Who says that, man? Are there people like that in the okay. world? Yes, man. Haven't you ever left your house? As you wish. Uh, ooh, a statue. I'll take care of this. You stand before a stone statue of a youthful female halfling with a determined look on her face. We can search it. We can refresh your divine connection with a prayer. What does that mean? It probably means I replenish my uh, spells. Hmm. Let's search. I found something. Christopher looks for a hidden compartment. Success! Each party member receives 20. Okay. Ooh, what's... What's this? Got a piece of jade worth 120 gold and... Manger's Mallet. Light weapon. Deals more damage. Bonus to Sunder Rolls. And the Sunder Roll. And the Sunder Rolls. Masterwork. Bonus to Damage Roll. So pretty good little... Uh, it's a light... It's a mallet. But it's not a hammer or a mace. It's a light... Whip. No, it's hammers. Okay. Whew. So I think I did take that on my... On this guy. Did I not? Yes, he's proficient with hammers. Yes! Awesome. Alright, so that's a little bit of an upgrade for him. I don't know about... I don't know what this does. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save it. <laughs> I'm going to try it. Me. It's the will of the gods. It's refreshed with a sense of serenity and renewed resolve. Did that replenish his spell slots? That's what I don't know. And I don't know if I actually used any yet. Wait, was that... Did it say Christopher? Alright, reload. No, Workala. Workala. Okay, leave it alone. Let's see. Workala. This is our paladin. So he doesn't have any spells yet. I think he's got some abilities, though, right? Let's see. How do you do the abilities? Uh, what do you do to... I thought it was A. Uh, let's see. What? Divines, teachers, smite. Well, this is kind of cool as long as I'm looking at this. So you can set up, if you know you're going to do, like, every time you want your, uh, wizards to cast mage armor every day when they wake up, I can just automate that. Uh-oh, is this one of the famous... Is it going to glitch out on me? Now I got the white screen. It's not... Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I clicked to make it do that. But if we go in and look at... Our wizard, for example, you could say, Go ahead and cast armor and... 
blur. You know, I don't want to do too much stuff at this point because I want to have a few slots left. <laughs> but we can try it on our. Uh, uh, let's see our uh, warlock here. Also do the same thing. I gave him a lot of other abilities too. We could look at. But again, I don't want to. I might save some of that for just really tough battles. So it might be more useful to. Uh... Okay, so I got to figure this out because there should be some options here. To use his abilities. I know he's got some, right? Number of times per encounter. Oh well, I guess I'll just take the uh, free XP. It's the will of the gods. Maybe that like healed him up though. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Here, you know, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna leave it alone for now. We'll wait till we get banged up some. We'll come back. Use it there. I'm telling you, I don't want to waste a single resource. Like this fountain here. I will handle it. No, this fountain. He that drinketh this shall receive life anew. So it's a healing fountain, but can only be used two times more. This fountain will be healed of all ailments, even death, and recover, recover all spell slots and power points. So this is a great example of something you don't even want to think about using that until everything else has been exhausted. At once. Do not waste hey, anything. Hey, over here. I found something. Oh. Got a magic herb. Also, carefully explore every map. Right, let's go take care of those rats. Okay, it's a ruined building located in the northwestern part of the village. Sure. Let's see, are we in the right area? There they are. There's a rat. I accept your challenge. Okay, who is this I'm looking at? Who's. Oh. Oh, stop. <laughs> stop that. Whoa, stop. Alright, that's. Our pally? Looks like I can't quite reach him. Can we charge? Yeah, we could charge. Alright, let's try that. Cool! Boom! Hit the rat with the hammer! Now it is Christopher's turn. He's the ranger. 80% chance to hit. Probably because he's flat footed. Just out in the open, no cover. That's the way I like my rats. 75% <laughs> chance. Oh, still missed. Oh, but... That attack of opportunity. You know, it's well worth it. Sometimes you can get uh, feats that give you more of those instead of just the one. You get yourself a reach weapon. You might be making lots of those. These monsters are not... You know, one of the good things about this game is they don't... Yeah, they're not dumb, predictable uh, monsters. They're pretty clever. Even these rats will try to take advantage of things. Yeah, see, now my... See, since they're engaged in melee, there's a penalty. He's got soft cover. So I might accidentally hit my own guy if I try to hit him. So I'm just going to let him uh, sit there. Here's a barbarian. Now, it said I got fatigued. Oh, yeah, look at this. Oh, no, this is that rat that hit him. Forgot about that. So he's got a reduction to his dexterity that lasts all day until you rest. So that stinks. Try not to let it bother you too much, because remember, it's going to be... There's only so many ways to get rid of it. Stinks. Try not to let it bother you too much, because remember, it's going to be... There's only so many ways... Missed. Yeah, oh. probably not even worth it. Oh, that sucked. You know, I think they might actually kill this Berkeley. He's only got four hit points left. That's terrible. Uh, maybe I should use my 
I might have to heal him up if he doesn't. If he's not able to perform here. I don't have Sunder as an option. I do have Smite. Look at this. Death Knights. Uh, attack bomb. Okay, so I guess you could try to use that. Smite. It's a move action, so I'll be able to attack after the. Oh, it's an. Look at Did I not? This. What treasure? I'm not sure what happened there, but okay. <laughs> oh, so I'm gonna have to we do something to about. Soon. Who said that? I said I needed to rest. So does that mean I'm? What does need to rest soon mean? <laughs> Are they tired? I don't see any exhaustion on these guys. Or fatigue. It'd be our barbarian, right? No, I don't, I don't know why it says that sometimes. I'll just start going on about how they need to rest soon. I think that would indicate they're exhausted or they have some, uh, you know, something going on, but I don't, I don't see it here anywhere. Okay, let's go ahead and use one of our precious, <laughs> precious slots. <laughs> Heal him. And let's see, what can I do to get rid of these? Greater Restoration. Jesus Christ, that's a really expensive spell. Cleansing. Okay, so there's Ability Drains. Ability Damage. Or an ability drain. So what is it? Uh, okay, which one of those is it? <laughs> Enemy action. Duration type rest. So as soon as I rest, this will go away. But that doesn't really help me now. And I don't. I don't guess there's any way to get rid of it without a. Uh, Cost me a lot, so maybe we'll just try to forge on. Yes. Hmm, here's some acorns. Look, I found something. Each acorn will allow one of your characters to cast the spell bark skin one time. And very, very useful. Of course. Sure. So I'm still sure. looking for this ruined. Uh, uh, yeah, I haven't. Right away. I don't think I've found the rats that I'm supposed to fight yet. I bet you that that's yes. going to be it, huh? Yeah, rubble, here we go. A foul stench seems to be rising from the ground. Search. I found something. It's instructed by Halion. You quickly find a fancy quarterstaff and a huge rat hole. Yes. Each party also receives 20 XP. I bring the sword of justice and the shield of faith. Okay. Whoa, man, I wish I could stop doing that. I don't know what's causing that action. This is our ranger, right? Uh, well, let's try to hit that one. Oh, he was using a sword. Didn't mean to do that. Whoops. Okay, here's a good example of where the five foot step comes in handy. Just pop him out of range. Could try to hit him with a rock. Okay, and there's Jordan, our cleric. Let's see, is there anything fancy I want to do? Probably not at this point. Now this guy, he's really not in a good spot. You know, the game loves to do this. They love these set encounters where you don't get a chance to, like, carefully position anybody. It's a good thing you got the five-foot step in those cases. Okay, I missed again. Go ahead and activate his rage. Boom, 20 points of damage. Yeah, that'll kill a rat. And what's the deal with this smite? So this is a, this is a basically a fan, uh, beefed up melee attack, I guess. Just everything in one action, okay. Go ahead and get him into position. 
Oh, I didn't see that one. Oh, you dirty rat. <laughs> Take that. Not quite dead. Uh-oh. Oh, there's a bunch more of them. Wow. Did not even see these guys. Okay, so this would be a good spot probably to delay. See what see if they'll move around. Okay, I don't want. Yeah, go ahead and move in. Get that one. Workla, you workla along the other side. Yes. Yeah, right there's a good spot for you. Ready? Oh, more. He's not going to have any decks left. I think if the decks gets to zero, they die. Oh, what's no squeaky? 65% chance. Even ranges aren't all that great. Oh, do not. Why do. Oh, this is not good. You know, I might have to break down here. Might have to break down and use my magic. I hope not. Oh, maybe the barbarian will come through for me. 85% chance of hitting. Come on. Now, if I had cleave, he would have just probably taken two out, but. I don't have cleave. No cleave, no Blakemore. You got an attack of opportunity though. Alright, let's see if we can get a little better. 45% chance, okay, I guess we'll take it. Ooh, man. It's a good thing I got mage armor. Right, here's the cleric. Okay, good. Let's see what I, just in case I did want to cast a spell. I could try to gust him. Could summon something. Could use grease. But again, I'm just telling you. <laughs> just don't want to use anything until you absolutely have to. Oh, it's not looking good. Come on, 85%, 75 you got him down. Good. Good. Oh, now they're teamed up on Pendragon. Energy Ray Stomp. What does Stomp do? They fall prone and take bludgeoning damage. Well, that's the spell to use. Oh, but look at that. I need to back up one space. You know, I'm going to use it. It's... Now, this is something I've been trying to figure out. What is this telling me? Two slash percentage. I don't. I assume the percentage is the the odds that the spell will connect, or that it'll get past their saving throws. And I've just never been able to figure out what that info is telling me, and I can't find any help for it either. Now, if we look at him, um, he's got no spell resistance. He's got some uh, saving throws here. Looks like reflexes too. Let's, maybe it's a reflex saving throw. Let's take a quick look here. Yeah, okay. So that's the reflex. So this uses reflex as a saving throw. Okay, this is starting to make sense now. So he's got a bonus of two. I guess it'll probably take half damage. So what's that percentage then? They must have some resistance to bludgeoning damage. Let's see if I can confirm that. Uh, let's see. Resistance, charge sneak. Where would that be? Armor? Dexterity bonus, armor class base. You know, maybe that, since it's bludgeoning damage and they have a little bit of natural armor, maybe that's what 
what that's about. Oh, is that some text about the rats? Giant rats can weigh more than 50 pounds and they can be up to 4 feet long. They attack without fear, biting and chewing any intruders with sharp incisors. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. Oh, not, not that. Uh, stomp. Prone, prone. So, didn't do much damage. Oh, and a new one just popped up. This guy's almost dead. Okay, yeah, this is starting to get a little bit increasingly hairy. These guys are prone, so of course they're harder to hit. Alright, that was useful, thank you. <laughs> now if you have been right in front of, if somebody was right next to that rat that stood up, they would have got a free attack on him. Okay. Oh, don't be missing. Not a good time to be missing. That's what I like to see. Okay, we got one right there. Miss. And I think it also takes some of their movement. When they stand up, right? I don't think they can stand up, run over, and attack all at the same time. Well, unfortunately, this guy's kind of got himself caught in the worst possible spot. Let's see. Oh, should I use another stomp? Uh, not a really good angle there. Uh, hmm, what to do? I don't want to burn through this stuff. Could try the grease. See, that's a little four foot area. Eh, let's just let's just ready him. Let's just attack, I guess. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Come on. Oh. As much as I hate to say it, I think I'm gonna have to start burning through spells. Might get lucky with a couple of these shots, but it's just not looking good. Alright, you did get lucky. Who's this, Jordan? 55. Oh, got him. Oh, he's unconscious though. As long as they're not dead. <laughs> unconscious you can deal with. Dead? That's expensive. Kind of disappointing, even even the ranger, I mean, his, his odds of hitting anything at range is just, at least at this time, is, is bad. It's all in the baseboard. Alright, yeah, you see, so he actually healed up a little bit, but we definitely took some damage from that. Now we completed it, but remember, if we go back before we killed the bees, we lose forever the chance to get these bees. So I'm going to continue on. I'm going to see if I can heal up a little bit. Alright, he's already used up all his spells. Uh, and I don't... I guess my paladin, I thought he had something he could do. I guess all he gets at this stage of the game is uh, smiting. Maybe at level 2 he starts to get something. Well, let's uh, save it. Check out the bees. Uh huh. See how bad it's going to be. Okay. A lot of unintentional pun there. Yes. Where are these bees again? Giant bees located a short distance away from the village towards the west and slightly to the north. Okay. So they should be in the right area. As once. Right away. I might see a giant snake, but... Uh... Where are these bees? Sure. Huh. Of course. At once. Uh, I wonder if I had to fight the uh, uh -huh. the snake to get to him. Save it. Sure. I can't go there. Yeah, this is a little bit west At and once. north. Oh, that's 
this? The creature springing before you looks like a female elf, but her skin is like bark. They're called dryads. The shy dryad addresses you in a soft voice. Greetings, Wanderer. Are you a friend of the forest? Indeed I am. I'm a swarm guardian of nature. Is that true? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Please, will you, repel, will you repel the restless souls who are defiling the forest? Are you sure they're restless souls? Maybe they just need to go to the bathroom. You know, it, it happens. <laughs> it has come to okay. this. Oh, we've got some undead up there to fight. Oh, I got a fight already. Oh, crap. I didn't realize it would actually enter me into combat. Well, hmm. That was a bad start to this. Okay, what was this? Oh, that didn't kill him. Let's just hope these things aren't super hard to kill. One down. I don't think I want to charge right in there. Maybe I'll turn undead. Maybe we could try turn undead. Let's get a little closer. Okay, not sure what this does. Let's just try it. Just does damage. Oh, sickened. Wow, these guys have... I don't know if that's a damage over time or just a debuff. I guess we'll find out. Ooh. Ooh, con drain. That is the worst. Well, we're not going to hit anything. What does energy raid do? Choose an energy type. Range, touch, attack. Okay, so what we can do is see if these guys have any vulnerabilities to anything. He's got a negative 25% to positive energy, so anything with positive energy he would be... Uh, actually do bonus damage to him. <sighs> I think that's what that means. But I don't know if I have anything that does that kind of damage. Let's just try fire. Okay, why is it not... Why is it not, uh... Okay, what's the deal? Out of range? Oh, wow, you really have to be close, dude. Okay, well, let's just, uh... Try the sling. <laughs> Five points. Yay! Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, that was stupid. Alright, work a Come on. Oh, don't miss. There you go. I guess I could try to turn undead again. I don't know if I'm going to be fighting any, any more undeads for a while. Might be a... Might be a good tactic. Get them all in there. This might be just the first wave of undead. That's always the danger. Christopher. Miss, 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 miss. Oh, he's down. Oh, you shouldn't have missed! Hmm. That wizard gets three attacks for some reason. Okay, one more. Miss. Oh, there's another one? <laughs> he almost hit my guy, see that? What is this? Zombie. Alright, come on. He's got four. All I gotta do is touch this thing and it's dead. Unfortunately, he did some ability damage to me. That's going to take a toll. Look at Ooh, this. Potion of this 
spirits of the dead are Thank you. Avenged. You've liberated the woods. Please accept this piece of armor called Foliage. It is very good for druids. And just like that, we leveled up, but don't get too excited. It's not soon. going to take our those effects off. <laughs> it may give us a little boost to, to hit points, maybe. All right, so when you're leveling up, you notice you uh, get quite a few nice benefits. You sometimes get an ability score increase, but also some new feats, new spells. So there's a lot of exciting stuff that happens. I like... Uh, D and D or five E or whatever it is, only the odd num or even numbers mean anything. But we can try to raising up these. This is our paladin, so I think they needed uh, strength. Obviously, wisdom I think was the next one. So depending on how you see your uh, your pally, I'm kind of leaning towards maybe bumping up this this strength. Get that to 20, I think, early as possible. Seems like a pretty good, pretty good thing. Okay, now he gets some spells. Remember, we got Cure Light Wounds. Although, I'm not sure if the Paladin learns spells the same way. <laughs> uh, I would hate to not pick that and then find I couldn't get it. You know, there's a way we could find that out. There is a way we could find that out. Go back to town. Let's go to that cleric. Yes. Okay, save it. So what I, I can do... I remember this. I can buy the scroll. 25 gold. Okay, go ahead and give it to him. Now... Nope. Yeah, see, he can't learn it that way, because if he did, it would tell me here. You've already got a scroll that does that. It's actually smart enough to tell you, but you might not want to pick that because, uh, you know, you've already got a scroll that you can learn it from. But let's just double check this. Let's see, can I get to classes and paladin? Tell you how they learn spells, special abilities, spells. Uh, spells pick. It doesn't say anything there about how they learn them, but I happen to know that a cleric does learn spells that way. Let's see if it says here whether they. Say where they learn spells? Yeah, it doesn't say, does it? Alright, anyway, let's just. Uh, we saved it before this show. Let's just experiment. Yeah, I think that would say, like, later on it, if it was something he could learn eventually. So I think we're. Probably shouldn't have uh, purchased this spell. <laughs> Doesn't hurt to have an extra one, right? Okay. Uh, I think I'm definitely going to want that. Although, let's take a look at some of these other ones. Uh, ten rounds of combat. You get bonuses to attack rolls, damage rolls, saving throws. That would be pretty cool. And its skills as you get better. You can enhance a weapon. Inflict wounds. Lesser restoration. Oh, boy. Cures all ability damage. Gotta pick that, I think. Oh, mass protection from alignment? Until end of combat. All allies in a 10-foot radius get plus 2 to armor class. That's really good. So we've got a couple that would benefit him personally, and then... I could take some for the party. I think I'm going to go for the benefit of the party here. Uh, I want that Cure Light Wounds, but it's just... I'm going to have to go Lighter Restoration instead. Okay, now we could pick something else. Ooh, what is... 
cleave would be a good one. Remember, if I could kill one enemy, I could get a free swipe at the next. Heroic Shield. When the Paladin is holding a shield, all allies within 10 feet of the Paladin gain a plus 2 to their armor class against dragons, outsiders, and undead creatures. So that's somewhat limited. In addition, the reflex bonus against breath weapons from Holy Shield increases from plus 4 to plus 8 for the Paladin only. Heroic Weapon against Dragons, Outsiders, and Undead. There's quite a few of those, all three of those. Uh, divine Bonus plus one on attack rolls and damage rolls. So again, very good. Uh, <coughs> very good options. We get an extra smite if we wanted to. Mystic Shield. When the Paladin is holding a shield, all allies within 10 feet of the Paladin get it. Plus two on all reflex. Oh. <laughs> These are all good. You know, at some point I'm going to have to come in here and get the... Like lightning reflexes, it gives you plus two to saving throws, iron will. I get all those. Maybe not this early. And depending on how you want to use those special things like sundering and... Uh, Improved initiative as well. Everything is a must. But like if you want to use Bull Rush, you, you pretty much have to get the improved versions. You know what this does? Not the charge, but these, uh, like the disarm. If you get the improved one, then it's just a, uh, let's see, where does it say? Yeah, it's a move action instead of a standard action. So you could, as long as you don't have to move anywhere, you could try to disarm them and then you still get an attack after that. So very useful. But... The damage bonus on smite attacks increases by two points. Extra smite. One additional time during every encounter. Now that's tempting. That's something I could use every battle. You can cast somatic spells while using a heavy or tower shield. Oh, I can't do that now? <laughs> what kind of shield do I have? That's it. Oh, he doesn't have a shield at all. Oh, well, just about all that stuff required using a shield. I don't even have a shield. Okay. I think I know which way I want to go then. Uh, I think I'm going to want the shield. Uh, which where was it? You cast somatic spells while using a heavy or tower shield. Now I'm going to assume that's pretty much every useful spell. Uh, I guess we could find out, couldn't we? Yeah, that's somatic. So curing wounds and uh, restoring everything is somatic. So I think that's the right choice because I definitely want a shield on this guy. No question about that. Just had to buy one. Spence is our barbarian. Mm, probably want to. He's got 20 strength already. Uh, might want to bump up his con a little bit. Let's see if I can get that to 20. Then again, Dex would be very useful for barbarians, so they would uh, maybe be able to dodge some attacks. Uh, I'm just gonna go with that. He should have some abilities that give him uh, lots of strength. Attack bonus. Plus one bonus to attack rolls with all weapons. That's just a straight up plus one. That's good for... You know, Cleave, I think, if I'm going to take Cleave at all, this might be the time to do it. Improve Rage. Ah, oh. and again, these breath weapons. So tough to pick. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna turn his breath weapon into a cone. I think that's just too cool not to have. We got our cleric here. I think it's wisdom for clerics, right? 
can get some extra spells if they get enough wisdom. Uh, okay, let's see. Healing Mastery. All your cure spells heal an additional 1d8. I don't know how you're going to beat that. Uh, this is a uh, spell range. Extends to close range, medium range, and excuse me, long range distances for spells by 5 feet. That says a shroop. Close, medium, or long. I don't know if that works on spells that are, uh, touch. Yeah, I think if it's touch, you're just stuck having to touch. I don't think those go up to... I don't think you get any range on those, even with that feat. Yeah, it just says close, then say touch. That would be nice, though. Holy cow. Okay, intensified energy. The energy damage you deal on attacks is upgraded from 1d6. Or he, I think the healing mastery, right? Okay, and then maybe uh, hmm. what is this? And then combat plus one enhancement bonus, or summon elemental. Yeah, I think that one may be in. Maybe enhance weapon. I'd rather have enemies dead than scared of me. Oh, this guy's got a low constitution. Intelligence, wisdom, charisma. Let's see if I can get a little help on Rangers. Uh, What do they need these stats for? Leading ability for ranger spells is wisdom. Okay. Okay. So that's already 18. It's pretty good. I think I'm going to try to get his constitution up a little bit. Battle Cunning. This could actually be really useful for him because he's got a high int. Cleave, probably not so good. Point Blank Shot. Let's look at this. Point Blank Shot feed improves your attack roll and damage when shooting at a target no further than 15 feet. Yeah, I think that's going to be one. Because that will happen most of the time. I'm trying to shoot. Alright, now we got some... Uh, I guess he gets some spells too. Burning hands, bark skins, probably the... How long does this... Oh, only one round per level. Oh, that stinks. Uh, it might be better than nothing though. Let's see what else we have. Your manufactured weapons and natural weapons do 1d6 points of additional energy. Does that... Does that include ranged combat? Sounds like it does, doesn't it? Let's try it. Hold animal, ranger, web, or summon a wolf. I love summoning stuff. It's fun. Alright, and there we got our warlock who looks like wisdom, strength, constant. Wow, it's a really great dex. Let's go ahead and bump up this constitution a little bit. I like staying alive. You can convert wizard spells with an energy qualifier like Fireball into a different type of energy. That's pretty awesome. Wow, so if you have a Fireball and they're immune to fire, you could change it to something else. Whoa, that's hard to beat. Uh, it's either that or improve the initiative, but I, I think that's just a little too... I don't know if I necessarily need it right away. Uh, 
you know, being able, this would be really great. Maybe get a little extra rage. I, I think I might have to go for the rage. <laughs> Tough calls. Okay, what else might we want? Uh, sleep's usually pretty good. Pretty good spell at this point. Flaming oil fog cloud. Chromatic orb. Or the good old magic missile. I don't. I haven't seen any for sale yet, so maybe we should just go ahead and pick that. New psionic powers. Let's do the. Hmm. Don't want anything with melee touch. Single target and close range takes 1d10 points of damage. Okay, try that. How about close range touch attack? Yeah, sure. And then finally our wizard. Let's see if I get this to 20, I think. So. There again with these options. Go evocation, you get a plus one to the difficulty class. So I, you know, if you're going to be casting a lot of these spells, this makes sense because that way you won't be dodging so much. Got some racials here, improved natural armor. Mm -hmm. Improved range, magic missile. Your magic missile spell is now a long range spell. Well, that's pretty cool. Very specific. But. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So I could take this, which makes. Five feet to everything. Short range is. Is that better than. I mean, you do cast a lot of magic missiles. Your spell resistance increases by two points. I mean, you pretty much got to go with that, I think. Yeah. Sooner or later, that's going to be essential. Okay, Ray of Frost, range touch attack. That sounds good. The ones that require match your attunement, I think you get some nice bonuses for these. Unfortunately, you know, I don't want to be close enough to have to touch the things. Okay. Right, so I think we're good. So we've got a little bit of healing out of that. Let's see if he... I'm sure he's still got those effects on him. Yep. But we can now... There, I thought. Does he get the spells? No, we have to rest. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> well, we could pay to have it done. So she'll take those effects off for a mere 400 gold pop. That just doesn't seem like a good deal. At once. Okay. And I think we got some new armor, didn't we? Okay, let me start a new file here. Get some fresh coffee. I'll be back in a minute. Alrighty then. Where was I? Oh yeah, we got some new armor. Foliage. Not foliage. <laughs> foliage. 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 How do you say that word? Does anybody really know? Uh, maybe the dryads know. So it's like hide armor, but it doesn't incur a speed bonus. So this would be good, I guess, for somebody. Now it's got spell failure, spell failure 20. Uh, I think that applies to everybody, right? Spell failure. Um, Let's see, spell failure armor. 
Yeah, see, so there's some feats. So whoever I put this on, if they can cast spells, is there going to be now a 20% chance of it not working? So who gets it? Let's see. Armor class of four. What's our barbarian have? Oh, that's right. Yeah, when you start the game off, you don't even have real armor. This is just, this is not real armor they're wearing. If you look at it, it doesn't actually give you any armor class bonus. So that's just garbage. So I should probably, I forgot about that little wrinkle. And I probably want to go to a store. Let's see, who's got the armor of this guy, right? Let's see if I can, uh, yeah, I think I could sell this, right? So, so it's only 19, so that's basically worthless. It's just cosmetic at this point. We've got a masterwork quarter staff. Long sword, go ahead and sell that, sell the gem. Okay, then we got this masterwork quarter staff. That might be actually good for somebody. Uh, I'm trying to think who's got a uh, proficiency in it. Uh, cleric's going to have a shield eventually. Uh, the Rangers. He's a... Uh, oh, simple weapons. He's got simple weapons proficiencies. <laughs> Surely to God, a quarterstaff is a simple weapon. Yep. Yeah. Wait, did I read that right? Why did I just look at it? Yeah. Wait. So everybody's everybody's proficient in a quarter staff, dagger, club, and sling. Okay, that's good. So we could swap that out, and that should give him a little bit of a. Let's see. That's plus five. That's plus one d eight plus four. Let's see if I can do this. So this gives him a plus six to, to hit, and then one d six plus four damage. That's only a plus five, one d8. So you do a little bit more damage with the long sword, but the uh, yeah, I like that better. I think you know it doesn't matter if you can't ever hit the target, right? Okay, whatever gold I have, let's see if we can get these guys a little bit better armor. So that's four thousand. That's not happening. Chainmail is nine hundred and ninety. Uh, can't really afford that. Basically, the only thing I can afford is this hide. I guess that might be better than nothing. Let's go ahead and buy that. We can sell that. Yeah, that's the only piece he had. <laughs> okay, so we gotta has we gotta get some uh, money. Yes. We need money, 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 money. We need bees is what we need. Uh, giant bees. Uh, short distance away from the village towards the west and slightly to the north. So... Luke. There, I think I see him. Now, I think if we do this... Yeah, we can attack it. I think we get a surprise round and do it this way. There we go. We start combat immediately. Oh, maybe I don't get a surprise the round. I see some armor in there. Looks good. Okay, cleric. Let's just go in and attack. Woo, one down. <laughs> oh, it takes takes Khan away, of course. Alright, Workala, you want to charge? Can't charge. And a miss! Man, Christopher's almost down. Let's see, at least this barbarian's got nice movement. And then Jordan. And a 
this. Actually, Christopher's not our... He's not our... I messed up. I shouldn't have charged in with him. Whoops. Wait, this is our... This is our wizard. No, no, no. Use the missile. All right. Fortunately, these have very low... Bunch more just appeared, and they get to attack right away. Yay! Oh, oh, oh. This is not looking good. Oh. Jordan, come on now. Oh, don't miss. Hmm. I don't think it's going to do any good to... Hmm, I need to, I should have checked their hit points. Okay. He's only got four left. Got him. Boom. Oh, oh, what is that? Are you kidding me? That must be the queen or something. Man, this is a tough battle here. So he's not joking around. Yeah, she must be the queen or something, right? What the hell? Oh, that was messed up. Uh, nine hit points left. This is my... I keep forgetting who this is. This is my cleric. Okay, 65% chance to hit. Turn undead, that's not going to help. Oh, that's right, he's the fire drake, so he gets that little elemental boost every time. Okay, I think this might be a situation where we need to use a spell. Try to magic missile him. <laughs> I get, I get one. <laughs> okay, that was... Put near useless? Oh, he got... He tried to get away. Well, that works. Yeah, we really need to hit. Ooh, this has got a lot of health. Okay. It's like completely out of everything. Okay, let's try the... Uh... Now, the cool thing about psionic power, we don't really have any points to play with here, but you can pump all these up with extra points. You can see here I got five total. Yeah, let's try to activate this now. Only a 25% chance of hitting, so basically useless. Let's try the magic missile. He's only got nine left. We might be able to do this. Oh, he gets another turn! What the? He wasn't in the order. That's... What the heck happened there? He was not in this initiative uh, order. That sucks. I wouldn't have done that if I'd known it was going to just randomly do that. Okay, I need to try something else. This is uh, requires range touch. 45% chance. What the heck? And a miss. This bee is getting an extra turn somehow. What's he got? Two points left? Come on. Got him. That was easy, wasn't it? It was not easy. Are you kidding me? But I'll tell you one thing. You can see why I'm, I took that die hard. You know, without that, I'd have dead characters I was dealing with. And when you die, it costs XP and lots of gold. You just don't want to die. I mean, obviously. <laughs> it's kind of standing the obvious, but you know what I mean. It's a... You know, first time I played, I didn't realize it was such a big deal, and I was just raising the dead. You know, come to find out, it's costed me a lot. Okay, give him... Do it this way... Clear. 
gets a little something. Whoa, 17. Oh, I guess, yeah, his, his other characters have all these dex penalties. So that's actually why they're having such a hard time. However, I have now done both of those quests. So I can go turn that in. That's good. Do I need to turn that in? The dryads? I think so. Okay, let's go turn those okay. in, see if we get some XP. Save it first. I'll be some gold would be helpful too. Okay, I've completed the first mission. No, I completed both missions. No, 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 no. Completed, completed. I hope it doesn't try to stop me from getting credit for both missions. Wait a minute. Uh, what just happened? No, not. Oh crap! Anyway, I guess it doesn't matter. Let me load this quick save here. I don't like the fact it says I've only completed the first mission, because I actually did both missions. Just want to make sure I'm not just not getting credit for one. Okay. As far as I can tell, I've done both. Okay. Maybe it's considered one mission, even though there's multiple tasks, so... Yeah, I think it did right. So it was 200 each, so I got 400 coins. 100 XP. And the other mission has to be nighttime. You have only one night, because afterwards the Blue Cooks will be responsible for investigating the reports. The dreadful ghostly figures that have been sighted recently. Sightings seem to be localized directly to the north of the village. All the witnesses fled the area. Currently there is no explanation for the appearance of these ghosts. <laughs> Destroy, exercise, or bust these ghosts and sanctify their abode. Second report, Restless Souls, Ruined House, southeastern part of the village, on the outskirts near the Tower of the Bailiff. Uh, a foul necromancer named Ixoxir built the house a century ago. Interesting. Ooh, that sounds nasty. Alright. Two potions of holy water. You can use them to sanctify the two areas in question. Any cleric or bishop with the banishment or turning domain should... Which I don't have. <laughs> should be able to do it without the potions. The uh, third problem, a number of people have heard frightening howls coming from the forest in the southeastern area. Some wolves of unusually large size. Some wouse. And you may be facing a werewolf. I don't have any silver weapon at the moment, but you may be able to find one. If you don't find a silver weapon, you can may it, you may at least find a silver ingot. So I need silver to kill the werewolf. Okay, let's go ahead and s sell our stuff and see if we can get some better armor at least. Let's see. Who doesn't have armor? I think. Oops. This guy's got some cool stuff, but I don't think I can afford any of this, right? Hmm. What is that? Did I accidentally buy that? Oh, uh, well. <laughs> I guess I'll need it eventually. Elderin. What is that? 
A minor artifact forged by elves and renewed with the resolve of their elders. <clears throat> Interesting. So it's a Ranseer. Grants the wielder a plus one bonus to willpower saving throws. Wow, minor artifact. I don't have nearly enough money for that, but it sounds awesome. Okay, so what do we want to do? I don't want to go to bed yet. Let's see if I can maybe get a little bit better farmer, maybe. <clears throat> okay. Those, the ranger is the only one I think that needs some, uh, Could buy somebody some chain mail. Let's see. That's his five armor class. So the chain mail is better. Max dex bonus of two. Max dex bonus of three. He doesn't have any dex bonus at the moment, so that's irrelevant. Um, <clears throat> a thousand gold, five hundred gold. So apparently the chain mail is the way to go here. Or I could buy the silver ingot to make a silver weapon with. Well, let's just hold off on spending the money, I think. Yeah, let's just, uh... As you wish. I'm trying to think. Uh, dwarven drinking problem. Uh, I know where this goes. This goes to a spider quest. We're going to have to, I think, recoup a little bit before we could try that. <clears throat> it's possible. Let's just see. Maybe I can do that quest without having to... What's with the dog? Yes. Let's Father kill the snake real quick. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's got four hit points left. Now, according to this, it goes fourth. Boom. Oh, that's cool. We will need so that's to rest one way to heal soon. is you just uh, get a little battles that your die hard roll for you. Need it. Mm -hmm. There's a still. Oh, by the way, you hold down the tab key to see stuff. I don't know if I mentioned that. Easily done. Okay, this is going to get tough here. As you wish. You see a fire drake standing beside a couple of monstrous scorpions that seem to be domesticated. <laughs> Welcome, adventurers. I am Sardabras, the druid responsible for this underground sanctuary. Now, I'm pretty sure you can have... This guy could be an NPC for you. He's really, really good. I carried him with me all the way through the game. First time, a, yeah, a druid. He's got a breath weapon. Alright, so Lafa is planning to use the rift to summon an army of fire elementals in order to conquer the world. Watch. Use your special skill. You enter the mind of Sardibus. You immediately hit a mental brick wall. Why is this druid protecting himself so much? Something is on. Huh. Alright, try to pierce. Oh, I can't. Where's your druidic sphere? Fire is my elemental focus. I'm looking for two boys. I tried to scare them away, they didn't listen. Sadly, I think the giant spiders had captured them. And you can't miss them. We could try to join forces now. Help you defeat Zalafa. Try that option. Thank you, adventurers. Please make haste, or it will be too late to stop. So we don't have to join him, I suppose. Uh -huh. Let's just see if we can of do course. it without help. At once. Stop, trespassers! I am Queen Shawang. This is my ter This is the territory of my cluster. What do you want? Looking for two boys. Our prisoners. If you want to release them, you must give us an herb spell scroll. <laughs> A 
scroll of fireball. That's a silly way for spiders to talk. Why does everybody assume that spiders and insects and snake men and so on and so forth have these severe lisp or <laughs> speech impediments? Uh, they don't really have lips and mouth to talk with anyway, or tongues, right? So, anyway. These rascals sh tried to steal a sacred gem from our treasure trove. Wait, you did, oh, the kids did? That's a serious offense. Normally we would eat them, of course. But in this particular case, we'll just wait for you to bring back the magic scroll. We try to intimidate them. Bring back the scroll. You can trade with them. And they got masterwork chainmail there. That's really cool stuff. Ooh, a cloak of resistance. Don't have enough gold for that. Some great spells, looks like. Yeah, <laughs> gonna be a while before I need Ice Storm. Yeah, Chainmail's probably a pretty good. Op Ooh, Ring of the Destroyer. Give bonus to damage rolls. That would be nice. Oh, lots of good stuff. Okay, what does she want us to do? Has asked you to give her a scroll of fireball or electric spear. And I think one of the options As is to try wish. to intimidate her, right? Yes, yeah, Spence will try to intimidate her. Look, if you insist on getting a scroll of fireball or electric spear in exchange for the boys, we'll just tear off your limbs one by one. This is probably going to lead to combat. Let's see. There's no need to be hasty. Perhaps our request is excessive. All right, we'll release the boys if you just give us 500 gold coins. Or you can give us a scroll of fireball electric sphere. 500 coins? Uh... Oh, he won't join us now. Maybe I shouldn't have saved it there. Right away. What was it? A scroll uh -huh. of electric sphere, I think. As you wish. Uh, who's got those? She doesn't. Charge energy stun. Oh uh, well. Yes. Where do I get I'll such a you. scroll? Right away. Well, it's 371 to buy the scroll. Uh, that's kind of stinks, but okay. I guess it's either that I'll or combat. I can't go there. I don't know how I, would. I might be able I to kill those spiders. We'll try the diplomatic approach. Here's the magic scroll. We got 100 XP. Here come the boys. <laughs> Die, stupid vermin. Yes, after that, <laughs> all that diplomacy, I'll just kill you now. The brats have been released. There's a couple spots in the game where you have these really good vendors that are bad guys potentially, so you're like, should I keep them around to trade with them? Or Cause you don't, of course you don't get the stuff. I mean, that just makes too much sense, right? You kill the merchant. Why would they get their stuff? I mean, obviously the stuff just disappears. As you wish. Okay, let's see if she gives us anything. Another 50 XP and an amulet. Okay, amulet of health plus two. Extra two to the Constitution. Uh, maybe you're a barbarian. What's his Constitution for real? So he's got five knocked off his Constitution right now. Whoa. So he probably doesn't really need this. Uh, let's give it to Paladin, I suppose, for now. 
Okay, go ahead and save it. Um, got some gold, I could buy some. As you wish. Some more armor, I right think. Away. I don't know what I need a climbing rope for. You know, I never did, I never did get a shield from my uh, paladin, so that's got a spell failure of 20, spell failure of 50. Wow, so he's never going to get a spell off. But didn't I get a feat? What did that feat do again? You can cast somatic spells, so I could try to, I suppose. It's possible, but... Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? Is that... I can't tell if that means I'll just... Is it a 50% chance of failing at every spell he tries to cast? Is that what that's telling me? Because if that's so, it really sucks. This one's only got a 20. Let's see what... Tell me somewhere here. Uh, spells. Zero. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't see a spot there that says something like... Spell resistance. So that's got a spell failure 25 on it. You know, I need I need some help with that concept, I think. Let's see, spell failure. What what does that mean? Users of arcane magic can receive this condition. So is it only arcane? If it's only arcane. <coughs> says arcane so maybe if I'm reading that right it shouldn't matter let's go with the tower shield then. I guess we'll see eventually if he starts <laughs> failing at every spell <laughs> then we'll know okay that's probably about all I could have well, a little bit more money Recurve bow, 90. Is that better than this one? This is 1d8. 2d4. I guess this is a little bit better, because the lowest you could roll with this would be a 2. It's got 80 foot range. That has 70 foot, so 10 extra feet of range. Criticals, 20 times 2, 20 times 3. No, I don't think it's as good as the one I got. 90 gold versus 75 gold. I don't pretend to understand it. Go ahead and buy that bag, I think. Uh, maybe, uh... Oh, I guess he can't use a shield. Must have to get a feat for the clerics to use a shield. Oh, I could get this. Queer ass, 1980. That's 7... Max bonus 2. So he will lose a point of XP. Or a point of a... Oh, this is... Fuck, this is crap. Why do they do this? Scale mail. He can't wear heavy armor, apparently. Okay, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Let's go ahead and buy that. Oh, I don't have enough gold. 1980. Oh, so close. I guess I can't afford it yet. All right. All right. Let's go see if we can do this uh, Sardibus thing. As you wish. Man, time flies when you're playing this. Those. We're just passing by. If you want to move through our lair, you must give us an arcane spell. Uh, we lack the scrolls, so I guess you want a word of honor. Very well. <laughs> okay. 
That was an easy 50 XP. Okay. I think we're coming up on a big battle here. You see a group of water elementals led by a mantis. As you approach, they'll turn to face the party. The mantis glares at Workala work work silently. Greetings to you. What are you doing here? <clears throat> I guess a mantis is like a praying mantis. Insectoid. I am Zalafa, a water druid. Click. Well met. Yes. Here to guard the guard, the lava rift. Phoenix Red Moon is nearly in its full phase. There's now a great danger. This place could be used as an astral gate and serve as the starting point for an invasion. Uh, so who do we trust? Sardibus or this person? Trust me, warriors. The other druid appears behind me. Do not believe Zalafus. He's already started summoning the fire elementals. Ah. What is thy bidding? No, it's Sardibus. Click. He's the one who's summoning the fire elementals. Okay, we can try to figure out who's lying, I suppose. Let's see. Look for strands of magical energy. Uh, a blue strand of magical energy. Did that just summon some more stuff? <laughs> I think that's an XP for it. Let's try the Aura of Evil. Oh, every time I do that, it summons more stuff. Does not find any Aura of Evil. Now let's try the Psionics. Pendragon believes that Zalafa is speaking the truth. If that's the case, then Sardibus is the one doing the summoning. Wait, is this, is this a random outcome? Because I, I know I had Sardibus in my party the first time. Alright. Well, what do we do? I guess we'll attack Sardibus. The will of the gods. That's weird. He was in my party before. He's... Oh, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> I don't think we're going to survive this battle. Not without... Not like this. No. They don't have a lot of health, but... Uh, he's going to get mobbed. And I don't know if these spiders are in the battle. What's this? I get con oh, I get control of these? Oh, let's see. Interesting. They have spells? Animal trance? I don't know what this is. This is the trouble. They give you control of stuff sometimes. And, I mean, do you really want to sit here and research like every option here? I guess we could try to do an entangle. Oh, it's only going to entangle my people. I could try to entangle him and the scorpions. Yeah, maybe that's the way to go. Yeah, I think that's all he can do, right? Oh, he's still got some spells he can cast. Interesting. Well, let's do... Uh, what's this? Well, maybe I should have used that instead. Winning a club or quarter staff. Oh, I can't cast anyway. <clears throat> All right. Well, I guess just leave him. Zlafa. This is so weird. I, I don't know why I'm even getting this option. not giving me any info on these tiles. Yeah, this one does fire damage if I go there. I got a little bit of space though. Okay, let's try the summon a wolf or summon an element. Well, let's see what these things. Okay, he does fire damage, duh. 
He's vulnerable to cold damage. Alright, so which... I'm thinking water's cold? Okay, do that. Alright, one down. Oh, he went right into the fire. <laughs> All right, Christopher is our ranger. Let's see if he can hit. Hey, hit Cerberus. Okay. Now we're looking at Jordan, who is the cleric. Go ahead. No spells. A line weapon. Turn undead. Uh, what do I want to do with you? I don't want to go into the entanglement. Let's go ahead and move here, maybe. Ready in action. They have bows and arrows? Oh, they don't all have uh, magic. Immune critical hits. Activate Stay's monster. Select a target medium range. Oh, that would be nice if that would work. 50% chance to daze Sardibus. Uh, let's try to daze uh, that guy, maybe. Alright, he's dazed. Right, get him into position. Oh, dead. Unconscious. <laughs> oh, these things don't have hardly any health. Yeah, just go ahead and attack. Oh, he's got a ranged attack. Useless, but he's 30% chance. That ain't gonna happen, is it? Oh boy. Oh no, he's okay. Let's get him out of there. Oh, I can't quite get him out of the danger zone. Got a 50% chance to hit. I got him. Let's take four points. Of, oh, that's another thing this game loves to do. Is you hit an enemy and they got some kind of ability that does damage to you, too. The old fire shield. Loves that. Freaking in love with that. Okay, where's this guy? If I don't want to go into my own entanglement, you'll just get stuck. Might have to eventually. Right. This is going to be a hard battle. They're taking damage every time. Oh, this is another thing he loves to do. He thought you had a battle of a certain amount of monsters, but now they're just suddenly going to appear all these reinforcements out of nowhere. They can make a battle really hard. He's only got four hit points left. Ah, oh, I just can't hit him though. Uh, let's see, what's this guy got left? He hasn't been hurt yet. I need to summon something good. I don't think that's gonna help. I guess I'll just attack. Oh, that was the wrong move. <laughs> uh, Zalafa. Okay, this guy. Oh, he doesn't have any spells left? It's not going to do him any good to push this guy. Got one down, but you see he almost did more damage to me than I did to him. He's down. Unfortunately, he's down. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I hate that they take damage. Alright, I need to do... Okay, maybe... That's 85%. Maybe that'll work. Right, one more down. Oh! 
hopefully that's the end of the reinforcements. If not, I think we're screwed. Okay. Oh, I hate that. Can you hit a scorpion? This guy's only got six hit points left. Mm. This is going to be close. Uh, you need to hit. Actually. Yeah, probably. St something's up there. I'll go ahead and shoot this. Alright. Oh, God, son of a. Mm. Somebody's still up there. No, oh, he's way out of range. What? Does any of this stuff have enough range to get over there? Close range. I don't think I've got anything that can reach him. Close range. Everything is close range. Now let's see. Gotta get him a little bit closer. Guess I could try to thicken the skin. Oh, that'd be a miracle to hit from this far. Is that going to put him in the fire? That would be dumb. It doesn't look like it is. Alright, just escape that. <laughs> Don't move. Elevation 60. <sighs> if this puts him in the fire, I'm going to be pissed. I don't think it did. Yeah, I think there's only certain tiles that are on burning. Now, can you reach? Doesn't matter. Uh, this is our ranger. Oh, it'd be nice if he could hit, but it's only a 25% chance of hitting. He's only got seven health. I don't think we're going to make it through that. Uh, that's delay. No, just not enough. He's only got seven points. This guy's probably my best option to get across. I don't know what kind of... It's going to do 1d6 point of damage per tile I try to move through. Hmm. This is going to kill him. I got over there, thankfully. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use my cure light wounds. I'm trying to think who's got the best chance of, I guess, work a lot. Stand him back, get him across there too. Oh, he's going to have to stop in the middle of the... Five percent chance. <laughs> yeah. Why is it such a low chance of hitting? Half cover. Oh, I guess because of that stupid. Uh... No. Hmm. Oh, this is close. Man, I need to hit this thing. He's only got three health left. If this thing does a backup attack. He's probably going to kill him. Uh, this guy doesn't have enough health to do anything. Ah, oh, I just cannot hit. Oh no, he's going to get another shot. Let's try what's careful shot do. Yeah, that'd be fine. I don't... Got him! <laughs> 
that was close. We will need to rest soon. Okay, I'm gonna show you something here. There is one of the okay. precious campfires. <laughs> if I click that, that will uh, let me rest, and I'll get back to. I'll get all my spell slots back and everything. But you're so freaking limited. It's just anybody's guess whether that's a good use of it there. I did save it before this. You know it's a good idea to kind of do a save and say, uh, before rest. And that way you could always come back and, uh, This area will now require your party to go through several encounters against fire elementals without resting. So your game has been saved automatically. This only applies to non-Iron Man games. This is a place of great power. May have to slide sleep. Oh, the enemy gets a benefit from a surprise round, of course. Oh, you see that? He pushed me into the fire. Oh, this is gonna get ugly. What am I fighting here? Ah, oh, freaking hate that. Mass protection. This is going to get. Alright, I guess they don't all have that ability. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> that is just so nasty. How many ways of these things there are? I am rich. Oh, what's this? Magma dagger. It's a magma dagger. Weapon enchantment flaming. Give energy damage reduction fire. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Who needs that? Maybe the... He's got a masterwork quarterstaff. We'll trade that for a knife. Plus six. Either way, you got a plus six. It gets a 1d4 versus... So it does less damage, but you get this flaming enchantment. Which is not going to help here, probably, but extra 1d6 of fire damage. And some reductions if he takes fire damage. So all in all, seemed like a pretty good trade-off. Give that Masterwork Quarterstaff to one of those guys. And this uh, Fire Diamond here, be careful with stuff like any kind of Magic Diamond. You notice it says it's used for crafting items. Uh, don't be tempted to sell those. There are points, quests that you need them for. You do what you want, but I find it's better just to hold on to them. Maybe use them for enchanting if you want. But just keep in mind, very rare. Oh, I should have. Let me. Did I save it before that? Ah, crap, I don't remember. I was going to see if I had any fire resistance or anything. Oh, see, you tripped the guy. These things have... Does that look like a frog to you, by the way? But anyway. Yeah. I think I'm going to need some magic to get out of this one. Oh, please tell me they're vulnerable to, to cold damage. Nope. Got some. He's immune to fire. And he's got death throws. That means he, when he dies, he blows up and hurts everybody. Nasty little. Well, let's see what we up and hurts everybody. Nasty little critter. Well, let's see what we up and hurts everybody. Nasty little critter. Well, let's see what we up and hurts everybody. What to cast? Maybe I'll delay him. Now see, when I stand up here, he's going to get a free attack on me. 
20, a critical hit. Nice. back dude. what oh, oh I'm gonna reload this is just too much <laughs> too much crap Cancelled. I accidentally gave him a flaming weapon which is completely useless when I wanted to heal him this is not going good let's see let's try to summon a Is that a fire track there, maybe? Dazed him. The problem here is this stuff is gonna hurt me as do as much damage to me as I can do to it. Okay, this is my clear. Yeah, let's see, is there some kind of uh Yeah, nothing I should probably save that for healing purposes. Let's go ahead. You gotta touch him to heal him. Yeah, heal him up seven, that'll help. Yeah, let's go ahead and summon another elemental. If they can daze both of these guys, that'd make it easy, wouldn't it? Oh, he's taking damage every turn. I can't tell if he's... Ooh, he swallowed him whole. Oh, this is so dumb. Oh, he's got 27 points. Ugh. These days, though. I wonder if I could put this one to sleep. 75% chance. Let's just try it. There, he's... <laughs> That's cool. Okay, he's asleep. I guess he's not asleep now. Yeah, see, so he blows up. All that damage. At least that guy came out. He was swallowed whole. Alright, who is this? This is my cleric. I gotta get him off of that. I don't guess he's got any. He's got a breath weapon. How does he have a breath weapon? Oh, that's right. I guess he didn't get it until now. Well, again, it's not gonna help him here. Oh, he saved. That's too bad. Oh, how many? Seven points left. Hmm, that's only gonna do what? 1d4 plus 1. Eh, it's not enough damage to kill him. Oh! Okay, that's probably. I hope that doesn't kill anybody. Oh, close. We're on the other side. At once. New enemies appear behind you. They attack immediately. Ranger hunting. You're expecting an ambush. I Good didn't want to round. Oh, they killed these spiders before I got to... I was hoping to trade with them some more. That sucks. Uh, Christopher, what are we doing? He's only have five health. Boom, that's that'll work. Oh, I need to use ranged weapons on these guys, don't I? Unfortunately, don't have those. Oh, he's got a breath weapon. Nasty one too. Only 45 chance. One more down. Can't reach him. Who am I dealing with? Oh, he's over here. Uh, da, 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 da. Well. 
Christopher. Man, it'd be great if I could just take these guys out at range, but <laughs> nope. Put one of my guys to sleep. Miss. Oh, I keep forgetting I got that careful shot I need to be using. Uh, I'm tempted just to magic missile these guys. I think I will. It's kind of a waste of a slot, but oh well. One more down. We will we need to rest. Just rested. Soon. At once. Jump over the lava. Why would we want to do that? I don't think we can do any of these anyway. I don't know why yes. I want to jump over the lava. As you wish. Ah, oh, dead spiders. That's sad. Okay. Fire elementals and monstrous scorpions appear all around you. They attack immediately. It's the will of the gods. Man, how many more of these fights am I going to have? Oh, this is the big one. All right, let's see if I can get through this, and I think this will be a good spot to, to stop. I'll show you my later game a little bit for comparison, then we'll call it a day. As you can see, these battles, they just keep coming. And this is just class, this is exactly the, the gameplay you're going to be seeing in this game over and over and over again. <laughs> Stuck somewhere, you can't, unless you want to go back to a previous save, you got to get through all these and there'll probably be reinforcements and you know, extra waves and you're just barely scraping by. Which, you know, it can be fun in small doses, but I mean, this is like every battle. So just be ready for that. Right, here's our archer. 75%. Yeah, it'd be nice to hit him. Got him good. They don't seem to miss nearly as much as you guys do. Alright, he's in trouble there. Who's this? Yeah, this is my mage. He's got no spell slots left. Because, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Try to hit him. It's Okay. Again, my breath attack is useless because these guys are immune to fire. Oh, you see that? Took just took three off his con. Let's see, I need to probably cast one of these spells. Inertial armor. Plus four bonus. Thickened skin, I think, is a plus one bonus. Let's go the inertial armor. Oh, did you see that? They got attack of opportunities on me. Alright, scooch out of there. I think that's about all we can do. Oh, it didn't help him. Just went <laughs> right through it. <laughs> because, of course. Who is this, my cleric? All you gotta do is five points of damage. Oh, God. I don't think I had to fight that stuff yet, so let's just see. I could five step away, maybe. 70% chance. All you have to do is hit him, and you would have got him. Ugh. Oh, he's got one hit point left. Down, wishing I had cleave. Really, really wishing I had cleave. Now, what I could do, I could bring back, try to bring back Pendragon. Uh, I don't know if I can do nine points. So we'll try. See if that helps. He's gonna have to stand up and get tax of opportunity. Probably gonna go right back to unconscious. Nope. Well, that was lucky. Of course, he missed. <laughs> Try to move him up there, maybe. OK. 
Okay, this guy's got one hit point left. Got him. 70% chance. Point blank shot. Come on. Oh! Why'd you have to miss? I think both of these guys have that reflective damage, so... Oh, he's only got six health left. He's, he's going down next, next time he takes any damage. Unfortunately, I... Yeah, that... Maybe that would do it. Let's see. Oh, missed. Miss, miss, miss. Not a good time to be missing. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank God for that archer, man. Ooh, I get to level up. You know, you can see how having an archer could be really, really advantageous in a game like this because there's so many things to do that blowback damage. The death throws and so on and so forth. Mm. Mm -mm. It's my paladin. Oh, it's going to be a tough call because cleave would be so useful. Now that helps dragons, outsiders, and undead. Now these Elementals, what are they considered? I don't see... What's an Elemental? Is that just is that its own thing? Dragons, Outsiders, so that's not going to be that useful yet. Mystic Shield. I like the idea of getting these Reflex Saving Throws. That is huge. But I think at this point, probably want to go clean. Either that or maybe this thing that gives me plus one to everything. Oh boy. So tough. Yeah, I think maybe the plus one to everything is just hard to beat that right now. Okay, we we'll get some new spells. That's going to be needed eventually. And I think being able to remove somebody that's paralyzed also very... Ooh, the Divine Favor, though. <sighs> Alright, Spence. It's a Barbarian. I think Cleave for him. Ooh. <laughs> There's always something. Cleave. Uh, I just gotta have somebody with Cleave. I mean, come on. Okay, easy. Our Cleric. This greater spell penetration is very useful. Hmm. It's basically an extra two points of damage, potentially. Proved Holy Smite. I don't think I have that spell yet. Oh, this would be very useful. You can cast protection from energy, which would be exactly what I need in a spot like this. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go for that. Make sure I actually have the uh, habit. Yeah, protection from energy. And let's go cure moderate wounds. Okay. We got our ranger here. Some more spells for the ranger. How about web? Maybe... Yeah, that's, that lasted for the whole battle. That's pretty good. Here we get new feet. Let's see. Far shot. Maximum range increased by 50%. Rapid shot. You miss more, but you do more damage. Powerful shot. A ranger with this feat gains a bonus of plus two to damage rolls made as part of a ranged attack. Oh, so that's just straight up plus two for every... Man, I don't know how you could beat that. I'm gonna go with that. That sounds great. Yeah, we've got a warlock here. Uh, didn't I go with this last time? Maybe I'm confusing myself. 
Oh, this gives us an additional number of power points equal to your level. Yeah, that's a must. Okay. Uh, color sphere, color spray, and energy, force shield, fog cloud, protection from alignment. Ray of frost. That could be a good choice. Uh, da, 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 color spray. I think chromatic orb. This flaming oil. All creatures of the area are drenched in flammable oil, making them more vulnerable to fire. Interesting. So you could combine this with their, their other magic user. What does it do to them? So 10 foot circle, drenched in oil. Next time they're targeted by an effect that deals fire damage and has reflex saving throw, aka fireball, flaming sphere, something like that. You automatically fail on the save and take an additional 2d6 points. So that can be pretty good combo. Yeah, let's give it a go. Let's give it a whirl. Won't be able to use it for a while, but... Good to have, I think. Ten rounds. Eh. Touch attack. Enhanced weapon. I kind of like the look of that force screen. I think Grease. And one more. The wizard. See, here's some of that meta magic. The meta magic still could be useful if you get stuck, I suppose. Uh, I think having an initiative is the way to go there. Okay, acid spell. Flash. Flaming Spear, that's not going to help me in this case, but go ahead and take it. Ice Blast, that's going to be useful. Okay, whew. I think that's all I need to do, right? Did I pick up any items during that battle? Potion of Intelligence, okay. Constitution. Every now and then you'll get one that's permanent. Right away. Uh huh. Valor away. Okay, this is, we'll see if we can survive this and then we'll call it. Oh, I should have healed up first. You know what? I'm gonna load. <laughs> Definitely want to heal up for that battle. They took a lot of damage. Jordan. Oh, he's got no. S I have no. S no, uh. Dang. Let's see. Did this. Did he take. Uh, yeah, he took some constitution damage, didn't he? Well, I guess we could try to resolve him with that. Uh, somehow. Let's see. see. Restoration on. Does that help him? Yeah, it looks like he got rid of it, right? But he still only got 26 health. I think that's the only healing I've got. Yeah, I don't think he's got any slots. Well, let's yeah. just see if we can get through it. I have a bad feeling. Oh, no, no, this. not like that. <laughs> what my surprise around, damn it. Let's repeat the process. No effect on target. Okay, so I think if we click on him. It's the will of the gods. Yeah, we get a free round, right? 50%, 50%. 50 50%, you missed. How much you want to bet there's going to be reinforcements on this battle? Ooh, he's in a bad spot. Why can't he move? Mass protection. 
That's a restoration, divine favor. Are these things evil? Let me make sure these things are evil. No, they're neutral, so I would have wasted that. Well, I guess I could specify, can't I? Yeah, protection from neutral. As you see, I can't really... I have to move around a little bit, so what I might want to do is delay. Let's do it this way. Let's see if we can get everybody basically in to that sphere. This guy's got 46 health. Five. One down. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can get him. There we go. Now I can see about casting this. I'll only get four, but that's okay. So that's, I think, a plus two AC bonus. Not bad. Oh, wasn't expecting to hit with that. Why is he moving so slow? Uh, I got a few... Spells, it might come in handy. Let's see, what is the range on these? It's close. It doesn't work on a bug, I guess. Chance to hit 70%. Didn't quite kill him, though, unfortunately. Okay, 45, 50, 60, Let's try the... I would kill it, but I want to see what else I can do. That small chance I might... Oh, still missed! Oh. Oh, that... oh, come on! Now, I was hoping to show you some of the... Some of the stuff you can do with the bull rush and the pull and the slide it doesn't look like I'm going to get a chance to in this video. But now there's lots of battles where you, there'd be a like a water trap here somewhere on the screen, and you could try to push them into it with that, and it does a lot of damage. It's actually one of the better. You know, oftentimes you're better off trying to do that than you are of casting the spell even or, or attacking. Now you get the feats that let you do it for free. You know, then you can do things like trip somebody, attack them. And then when they try to stand back up, you get an attack of opportunity on them. So that becomes pretty sweet. Uh, whose turn is it here? Where's Jordan? Okay, let's see. Can he not... Let's go for this big guy, I guess. Chance to hit 50%. Yeah, let's see if I can get this guy, because I don't want to take any damage from that blowback. Might be able to get him from here. Oh, I think that he got an attack of opportunity on me somehow. Oh, that cleave already proving its usefulness. <laughs> oh. I'll just show you this. So the trip, you can see I got only got a five percent chance of it working. So that'd be obviously not worth it. Uh, grapple, you can try to make them where they only attack you. So if you have a tank character, you can try to get them to grapple you. And then you can even try to pin them from there. Uh, so that could be very useful for a tank-like character. I think Faint, you know, you can look at them and see what kind of decks and armor they got. So he's got 16 armor and, uh, oh, what's his decks? 21, so he's got pretty high decks. So you might try this Faint option. So you, so move action allows you to deny your target his dex bonus to armor class against your melee attacks. I think it's only your melee attacks too, right? So it says standard action there. So does that mean I don't get to move? I don't get an attack. 
So maybe it didn't work that time, but you get the idea. That's just a lamentably bad chance of hitting. Try to do a mind thrust. Ooh, 19 points of damage. That'll work. Try the careful shot. 95% chance. Come on. If I, it's got to do eight points. What? Why it's did he get an attack of opportunity on me? Oh, I guess he was closer than he looked. We will need to rest soon. All right, and there you go. We're out of there. Well, so from here, you know, we could go back to see about doing those dwarves. Let me just make sure that uh, I didn't mess that up when I rested inside. Oh! You see, I lost the opportunity to deal with these dwarves because I took that campfire. <laughs> so I should have dealt with this first. But, you know, that chance is gone forever now. Oh, sure. not, that, not that big of a deal. So, you damn bird. But anyway, you can see here, I'm only on, like, these characters are level three at this point, but you can already see you start to think long term, you know, maybe next couple times you level up, you'll take this feat, this other character will take that feat. Uh, you can start working together, you can use your delay, so maybe the one does a flammable oil the first round, or on their turn, and then you could throw a flaming spear <laughs> to get those extra damages. Uh, the uh, Let me go ahead and load up the, uh, I'll save this one. Show you my other one. So if I look at the other game here, uh, where is it gonna be? Yeah, right here. Saved game selected. So this is pretty much right near the end. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but I thought you might like to see where, how your characters can evolve. And you know, your first playthrough, a lot of it, you're just kind of experimenting with different feats and stuff. Yeah, see, there's Sardibrus. So somehow I forget how he ended up joining my party. You get to this point and you've got all sorts of things to play with. Spells to cast. Plenty of slots, because always any time I had a chance to add some extra spell slots, something like that, always went with that. Yeah, I think he's got a plus four ice quite a bit better gear than my starting party there. But you know, you get lots of cool stuff, you find and plenty of potions and scrolls. I mean once you get kind of savvy to the way Pier or the developer sets these levels up. You know better than to blow through your spell slots <laughs> wantonly. You know, you only use it when you really, really need to. And if you care for this is probably this game. I was just playing Icewind Dell again the other day and I just noticed how you just your inventory you just basically get burned with all these potions and scrolls and things. <laughs> uh, so you kinda get in this habit of just you know, I hardly ever use them. Basically, I just end up selling them eventually. Uh, this game, though, you really do need them, and you can use them. A lot of times, you're forced to use them, and you find yourself buying potions a lot, which is something I don't don't normally do in CRPGs. So I, I think it's one of those games where you really get a lot of value out of potions and scrolls. You know, you want to carry it around. You don't want to just sell things for cash. Typically, everything will be needed at some point. Some of the stuff I wish I had known that I didn't know, you know, sort of, well, I've already gone over a lot of it when I created that party, but taking that Die Hard right off the bat was essential. Uh, I think any feats that give you spell resistance, like this death spell resistance one, really worth its weight in. You, know, you might want some something flashier, but the, uh, the stuff that gives you improved initiative, always worth it. Uh, anything that gives you resistance or improves your saving throws, very, very useful. Uh, let's see, so this guy was... Yeah, this is my centaur. This is my bard. So you can see these bards have quite a bit of a... Uh, oops. Yeah, Isotope is my bard. Oh, maybe I'm out of a... Uh, yeah, maybe I'm out of uh, songs. <laughs> But quite a, you know, especially at the start of the game, the bard was really, really helpful uh, because he. I shouldn't have gone with the centaur, and I should have had much more charisma. I don't know what I was thinking. It just escaped my attention somehow that his charisma was so low. <laughs> I had like every opportunity to try to bump it up a notch. That was a bad mistake. I really should have had that up to, to 20. Uh, that would have been very helpful. 
Um, but they've got some very powerful buffs. They can daze, disorient, fascinate, create chaos in their songs. Uh, it's a very good character, ultimately, but it just took a long time to... You know, obviously I should have paid more attention when I created them. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, some of the feats, like there's one that lets you swap out your inventory or take potions and use those as, as move uh, move actions instead of full actions. Those could be, again, a lot more useful than you might think. Uh, some of the real nasty battles in this game, you uh, get a surprise round on you and or uh, maybe you got like limited time before they really start hitting you with a bunch of stuff. So being able to take that potion of fire resistance, let's say, right off the bat and then still move uh, could be essential. Uh, there's just lots of stuff like that in this game. Uh, it's very, it's probably the most, I don't think, maybe, I, you know, I think that this might even be more tactically, uh, I think I got more tactically involved in this even than I did in XCOM 2, or the new XCOM games. And that those I tend to fuss, micromanage the hell out of those. <laughs> Uh, but with this too, I just was constantly looking and actually looking at each enemy, thinking about like, okay, what, what would be the best approach to use here? And then maybe uh, try something, reload the battle again, just to see, uh, try something else. So there's a lot of that kind of, uh, you know, some people might not like it, but I just kind of uh, always enjoyed that really focusing on little minutia uh, when you're having battles. Uh, also notice, uh, you know, when I install or when I was playing it this time you did an update uh, you, if you notice it never crashed on me as I was playing <laughs> so maybe he fixed some of those things that were causing it to crash so much uh, which that's uh, that would be great if that was the case now negatives uh, you don't really see it in that in that early game um, I don't know if I have a, a spot here where I can really show game you. Selected. But when you get one of these bigger battles going, it can be, it could take a long time because there's always just so many spellcasters. I'll run in here and you can see what I'm talking about. Ah, eh, well, this is not really. My weapons are. <laughs> you know, every time I want to show something, you know, this is okay. You can see like all these, uh, a lot of these will be spellcasters. This is not the battle I really had in mind. The one before this, where you have to come, you come into this castle the first time. It's a huge battle. There's all these archers and uh, different spellcasters, and the AI. Let me just skip ahead. Maybe we can. Hey, you see him going there? So thinking. So that was relatively quick. But you know that big battle I'm talking about. There's so many of those spellcasters, and there's like thinking. <laughs> the thinking and the archers for some reason they have to think a lot before they shoot each arrow and they might have like three or four arrows that they shoot uh, so it's just it can take a long time to just sit in there like come on what are you thinking again just shoot the stupid bow <laughs> it requires so much thought you know but boom arrow all the way across the screen boom it'll hit you thinking next arrow all the way across yeah it's just Little stuff like that gets annoying, especially when you're like, come on, get back to my turn. <laughs> you know, this uh, dude's hanging on by a sliver of health. I need to get back to him. Uh, and then also, I think uh, the end game is fun. You I mean, you got lots of power, lots of ability. But as you can see, they, they just tend to throw all this irritating crap at you. Like you're always standing in a puddle of something. You know, the next thing after this will be a web effect, something to slow you down. You can't move. Uh, you're always getting hit with like those level drains, ability drains, just stuff like that. It can make it really tough. Uh, you know, just, I don't want to say tedious, you know, but it's like, okay, I've seen this, I've sort of done, been through this. <laughs> Do I need to go through this kind of scenario <laughs> again? You know, you wish it'd be a little bit more, uh, a little bit uh, less use of these kind of uh, effects. I mean, I get it makes sense that the AI would want to do this to you, but, you know, it's just, I don't know how fun it is. <laughs> like, what do I do at this point? You can try to blow up. This is what I was saying earlier about having that gust of wind. Like, I didn't know that until very late in the game, but uh, one of the, th you have to have 
greater gust of wind. But you can use that to try to blow away these uh, fo acid fogs and things of that sort. There's, of course, uh, freedom, the spell of freedom, rings of freedom, things like that that'll help. Uh, when you get webbed, you can try to dispel it. There's different kinds of uh, ways to avoid this, but of course, you're also using up your action <laughs> to get rid of the acid fog. So now uh, you didn't do any damage to it. So that could be really nasty. I just found these spellcasters were just... Every time you have a fight with uh, even one, but especially if there's multiple spellcasters, it's really, really tough. And, not, you know, just a lot of pain. <laughs> and this battle, you know, you, you're looking at this, you're like, oh my god, that's a lot of stuff. Well, guess what? You know, after like the first round or two, there's going to be all these other forces that show up, just spawn in. You just get extremely tough. We have to fight the same battle like six or seven times until you get just the right kind of initiative rolls and luck rolls, basically, uh, to be able to survive that. And even if you do, your, some of your characters will be dead. And you got to go and res them, and that's very expensive. And just a lot of stuff like that. It's challenging. You know, I would say maybe one or two battles in the game like that would have been fine. I don't need every little trash battle to be on that scale. It's just too much. <laughs> I don't need to sit here and micromanage and fuss and, you know, eek by on the, the skin of my teeth on every freaking battle. You know, that, that was too much. Uh, I think they should have uh, toned some of this stuff down. You know, do, do we need this many enemies? I, you know, I think not. <laughs> but then again, and maybe your mileage may vary. Uh, you could have chosen, you know, if I had a, you know, the second playthrough went a lot smoother because I knew more about what feats to pick and so on and so forth. But, uh, yeah, it just felt really, uh, you know, you don't need every battle to be high stakes. <laughs> that high stakes. The worst, ah, worst thing he does is when you think you're just about ready to finish a battle. And then up pops another wave out of nowhere. He, he does that sort of thing all the time. Uh, and he loves the not letting you rest. So you're like, man, the campfire. You get to the point where every time you see one of these campfires, <laughs> you're like, oh my god, finally. But you're too afraid to use it because, you know, I mean, for all I know, I could fight all this stuff. And the next wave that pops up after that, there might be another big, big, big battle. You know, that, and you know, and then you used up all your spell slots, right? So, yeah, it's, it's really tough. Um, all that said, you know, I was able to beat it. Not necessarily a phenomenal <laughs> tactician, but, you know, I was able to get through it. It wasn't that bad. Uh, but, yeah, it felt like I was playing on, it felt like I was playing a game that was on, like, a super challenging mode instead of just the normal difficulty level. Personally, if I had designed this game, I would have toned it down just a little bit for normal. Make it not quite so fussy and difficult. <laughs> but, you know, again, people have different tastes for that sort of thing. I do feel like somebody that's not patient or uh, hasn't played a lot of these games would probably just rage quit. <laughs> you know, fairly early and just, oh, this, this is crap. This, this developer's way too brutal. This is just sadistic, you know, and just quit. Uh, which would be a shame, because it missed out on a really great game. Uh, other thoughts? You know, the music's good. Uh, the audio visuals, you know, you, you see what you get. I would have... You know, there is that grid, I guess. I, I didn't really play with that on. Uh, that might make it a little bit easier to see what you're doing sometimes. Uh, let's see, where was that option? I saw a grid option. Where did that go? Uh, it seems to have disappeared. Maybe it's on a different menu. Oh, I think it was here, actually. Yeah, so you could try this. I don't think this is perfect. You know, I guess we could try the, uh... If you really wanted to get... If you didn't care at all about graphics, we could try this, uh... This mode. You know, this would really, uh... You know, this is almost starting to look like Fantasy Grounds to me. <laughs> But, you know, this might make it a little bit easier to see, like, around corners and things and see exactly where they are. You almost kind of want hexes, I think. 
but you know it's not a, a giant team working on this game so obviously he didn't have the resources uh, to do everything probably like he wanted there's obviously some compromises here yeah, negative levels <laughs> but uh, you know don't let any of this stuff uh, put you off the game now I would put it like this if you were okay playing games like Icewind Dale and Baldur's Gate you know, if you didn't, if you weren't bothered too much by those and some of those really hard battles, you go back and play those. If you don't, if you if you have a memory of those games being easy, <laughs> go back and go back and play Icewind Dale first few uh, you know zones of that and see what you think. Or uh, you know, Temple of Elemental Evil, of course, the old gold box games. I mean, those are really tough too. A lot of times you had to reload, uh, so that's really nothing new. Now, I'm just gonna say I really like this game. I, I'm even tempted, you know, since I made this new party, I'm almost kind of sucked back into it. Like, oh, I want to see what these characters would be like when they... <laughs> Knowing what I know now, you know, I could really... Maybe that big battle would be easier at the castle. So you'd know that sort of thing. It might be more fun uh, than playing it through the first time, where you're just, like, really dreading because you don't know uh, when would be a good time to rest, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, probably by the time you would play this, there might be clue books, and, of course, the... <laughs> The edition that has the clue book could probably tell you all that stuff. I haven't even looked at that. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna stop it here. I get the game. It's you know it's what 40, 50 dollars, 60 dollars I think for the full on version. You know it might seem like a lot of money, but you know the you could think about it as almost especially if you buy it from his website. You know, it's basically 60 dollars into the hands of the person who's 99 if not 100 percent. You know I know the guy that did the music, <laughs> but. Uh, most of the money is going to the person who actually loves the game, created the game, trying to make the best experience possible. Uh, and this is the second one of these, so I feel pretty strong that, that uh, Pierre will be making a third game based on the uh, based on the money raised from this one. So it's just somebody that I would love to support. You know, this is exactly the kind of project. <laughs> like support it, support it, support it. Even if you don't want to play this thing right away, you got a big backlog of games, just go ahead and, and buy it uh, so you can make sure there'll be more games like it in the future. And man, I, I think he's really learned a lot from the uh, first nights, or first uh, nights of the Chalice. So I'm already looking forward to the third one. Uh, anyway, I'm going to stop it here. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'd uh, love to hear your thoughts. Uh, you know, your experience playing this game, what you think about it. Do you think it's too hard? Or do you think it's just right? Or maybe you even think it's too easy? Uh, you know, I'd love to hear those thoughts. Um, so whatever it is, I always like to talk to people about these games. But anyway, I, you know, I'd love to hear those thoughts. I'm going to stop it here, get the game, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> That's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I gotta say a little bit of a, you know, it's kind of humbling. You know, I do these uh, do these shows. Uh, you know, I do love uh, CRPDs. I love games. I love talking, you know, playing these things, talking to the developers, getting all those uh, insights, and just hanging out with people like yourself, frankly. But uh, the show depends on people who are willing to go from just watching and enjoying the show to financially supporting it there's a link in the show notes in the comments or the description of the show uh to a site called patreon uh, you can go to matchat.us if you like and i really need you know folks to step up to the plate here uh times have been really really tough really ever since uh you know the pandemic uh tell you the truth i don't like to go into this kind of stuff but i mean the show just you know it really has it been the same a lot of people had to reassess their priorities you know around that time and i think they just never really gotten around to coming back <laughs> you know and re-upping uh, their subscriptions you know we moved from a paypal uh, or patreon uh, episode set up to a monthly fee and for whatever reason a lot of folks just never got around to uh, renewing that or like changing their subscriptions to the new monthly model or one time uh, fixed payment you know whatever's comfortable for you i don't want to complain <laughs> i just want to say that uh 
you know, if you if you let your stuff lapse uh, and you think, well, it's not important, it's just a buck or two, you know, he's not going to miss that. But, but believe me, it, it adds up quick, you know. So I'm just going to ask you uh, kindly as I can, if you know, if you have let that subscription lapse for whatever reason, uh, please go to the link in the show notes. Take a few minutes, set up the Patreon again, you know, make sure everything looks good to you. Uh, you know, a buck a show. <laughs> That's all I'm asking to do these uh, episodes. So please do that. And I really, really appreciate everybody who has. You know, it's kind of gotten uh, uh, fairly low recently. Uh, so I just put, up, put out a little thing on Twitter. I'm like, you know, here's the deal. Uh, if you want Matt Chat to continue, we need uh, support. <laughs> so, you know, almost instantly some folks uh, jumped in there and you know, put me back over my uh, sort of tier again. So I really appreciate that. And I will get their names and, uh, you know, announce those. Maybe do a video where they're in the party we'll see about that for next uh, next time but anyway if you already support the show thank you very 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 much for that i really surely uh, i mean sincerely <laughs> surely do uh, appreciate that support whatever it is whatever you're comfortable with thank you for that uh, and if you're like well is it necessary does it make any difference will he you know should i should i you know just, just go ahead and do it <laughs> only takes a few minutes it's really easy you're really going to like uh supporting the show uh the uh the discord channel is awesome a lot of cool folks you can get in there and chat about crpgs or adventure games or whatever a lot of like-minded people that you're going to like uh, so come on in uh, you'll have a good time and uh, just thank you very much once again uh, for all your support all these years keeping that chat <laughs> going could not would not do it without you all right, what about that news from the Matt Cave? All right, I got some pretty awesome stuff here. A lot of folks, uh, you know, wrote in about these things. I got a couple names here, Michael. I think uh, Matt wrote in, the other Matt, Matt W, wrote in about a few of these. Who, who else? Uh, maybe yet another Matt, <laughs> Shrugi. <laughs> um, anyway, here's a couple of these uh, items. So first of, uh, now I don't know if you've ever played The Secret of Monkey Island. Uh, I don't personally know that, but my guess is you either have or you really should. <laughs> I don't, I don't know who, uh, you know, if somehow or another you've missed uh, missed out on that Monkey Island experience, you really need to rectify that. <laughs> you know, it's one of the, one of my favorite games of all time. It's it's a graphical adventure game. It's uh, by uh, Ron Gilbert. Hilarious. It's a, uh, you know, it's some people don't like adventure games. They get a little nervous about the not being able to solve the puzzles or whatever. But you know, give this one a chance if you have it. But anyway, I, I bring it up because there is a long-awaited. Uh, I guess it's, yeah, a sequel or a follow-up, they're calling this, coming out. It's Return to Monkey Islands, due sometime in 2022. Now, what's significant about this is that Ron Gilbert was kind of famous for saying he would never do these again unless he, uh, I think the deal was, he had to control the IP or something, you know, some, basically something that wasn't going to happen. Uh, but, well, apparently they've gotten past that, and he's involved in this, and you can watch the trailer. It's really a, a fun trailer. So I think uh, you know, it seems like people are a little, maybe a little bit uh, hesitant, or they don't quite maybe know what to make of this. You know, it's, let's face it. You know, there's so many things that have been ruined by reboots and remakes and things. <laughs> Sometimes you just wish they just leave that thing alone. Don't try to remake it. We don't need to remake. But who knows? You know, maybe this will be one of those rare exceptions where it's you know well worth all the hype, and it, you know it'll be just as good as the. Uh, the classics you remember, we'll just have to wait and see, of course. But anyway, personally, I'm really uh, thrilled about this. I'm going to definitely stay tuned uh, to this project. Now, in other news, um, there's a game called Sovereign Syndicate. You know, Michael wrote in about this. It looks really interesting. It's a CRPG set in Victorian steampunk London. Huh? It's just one of my favorite settings. <laughs> I mean, what's not to like about that? Uh, explore an open world of back alleys, brothels, and opium dens as one of three characters. Sharpen your skills or let them stagnate. No random stat points. Try your luck with our tarot, tarot card chance system. Combat, persuasion, magic. The choice is a card chance system. The I think I kind of messed up my <laughs> little blurb here. 
Uh, but anyway, it looks like an interesting project. I love the setting again. The graphics look really nice. It's good. Uh, looks like a pretty good design on this. I'm kind of curious about what they're saying about these uh, stat points. You know, I'm always kind of intrigued by how different uh, RPG and CRPG designers approach these things. I like to see innovation. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but it's just kind of nice to know that there's people out there willing to experiment and try new things. And who knows? You know, maybe this will really, uh, you know, really click. So I'm looking forward to this. Thank you, Michael, for sing, sending that in. Uh, and then last but not least, good old Nox Archaist Mark uh, has put this out. The making of Nox Archaist, $9.99. This is a 259-page full-color PDF. And it talks all about his quest uh, to make this Nox Archaist game, including a decades-long quest, including the... Uh, Tile Engine, the Kickstarter, the failed Kickstarter project, <laughs> the quirky graphic system of the Apple. I think he did this on Apple too, right? And getting decent audio out of that one-bit speaker. He's got stuff in here from Garriott, Dr. Cat, Burger Becky, <laughs> Waz. <laughs> hey, don't you want this already? I mean, come on. Uh, finally, um, Mark details how an obscure floppy disk bug nearly derailed the entire project weeks before release. So I know a lot of you folks have played the game. I sure hope you have. I mean, my goodness, go, ch go check it out if you haven't. Uh, but, you know, if you're curious about the development of this, what it's like uh, dealing with the Apple II, it's just, you know, it's, it's, I think it's $9.99. <laughs> just go buy the thing. You know, support uh, Mark if for no other reason, but I think you really enjoy, uh, uh, enjoy this book. Okay, let's wrap it up with a quote. I've been... Uh, Rereading, I read, we read The Hobbit recently, and I've started on The, the Lord of the Rings again. This, this, you know, I've probably read these things three or four times growing up, but it's just always amazing to me that I can pick these books up again, you know, decades later. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so good, you know, and I know it's got, you know, there's some things you can complain about, fine, whatever. Uh, I just really, really love these books, always have, I know a lot of you have uh, too. But anyway, I was looking for quotes, and there's some great quotes in the books. Uh, but there's some things that Tolkien just said, I guess, to reporters or uh, magazines or editors or something. I don't know. Uh, but I came across this one, and I just think this is just so good. <laughs> it goes something like this. Fantas <clears throat> Fantasy is escapist, and that is its glory. If a soldier is imprisoned by the enemy, don't we consider it his duty to escape? If we value the freedom of mind and soul, if we're partisans of liberty, then it's our plain duty to escape and to take as many people with us as we can. Love that. <laughs> anyway, I hope you folks enjoyed that and see you next time. I wake myself up from nothing to a state of extreme poverty.